everybody hi okay girl listen i was in here juking a second ago and then i realized that my first topic was very serious and i had to tone that the fuck down <laughs> like i didn't i didn't even mean to be on that level in here with evelyn champagne king and then come up here right after talking about a serious topic everybody i hope y'all having a good day child but i i am so sad about this like this is miss jackie o if y'all don't know all right she's all over social media right now she is dc young flies um baby mother who he's been with for a while now they have three kids together and she recently just had a baby and she decided to go in for a mommy makeover and she didn't make it and I, she's only 32, y'all. She went to Surgeon Made underscore Curves. I don't know who that is. I know there's a whole social media page for the surgeries because it's a whole, it's a whole culture now to just get elective surgery for vanity's sake. And if you follow me for a while, y'all know I, I, I go I go so hard against this and people always want to argue with me about it. And when I fight about it, this is the, the moments that I think of. These are the moments that I think of when I am arguing with people online, which seems so menial, but in my mind, it's such a big deal that we have a culture that tells people to care more about how they look than if they're alive. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very bothersome to me that we have this culture that tells women that they need to look a certain way because if they don't look a certain way, they're not as valuable. They're not as beautiful. So they have to go and make these decisions that when you really think about it and you weigh it, and I've said this so many times before, it should not seem worth it to you. I, I've said it so many times and there are so many women that are online that want to call me broke or they want to say that I'm just hating when it's the moments like this that I think about this beautiful woman, only 32, with three young children now left without a mother for vanity's sake. For a bigger butt, for less stomach fat, maybe her skin was a little too loose after the baby. We can't possibly be okay with that, right? We can't possibly think that that should be exalted and doted on as well, right? No. We have to have a culture and a society that tells women after living through fucking childbirth that they should feel it is necessary to go and cut themselves open again after having a child so that they can look a certain way. And that's just very, very sad to me. Very, very sad for DC Young Fly because I feel like he works very, very hard very talented, and now the person who was tasked with being the primary caregiver for his children while he did that is gone. And not only is he going to have to figure out how to live without her, he's going to have to figure out how to do that while still being the 
person that takes care of everything and help the children through it. He's not going to be able to just drop them kids off by her moms and then just like, that's it. That, that, no. Not if he really cares about them. This is so fucking terrible to me. And I really, really wish, I really, really wish that women valued how their bodies worked more than they valued how they looked. I wish we cared more about being able to retain our abilities as we got older versus retaining a look that may come or go like. I want to be here no matter what fad comes. Because this wasn't a thing in the fucking 90s. This wasn't a thing in the 80s. This is new. But essentially, it's the same thing to me. The, the idea that you should be risking your life, cutting into your body, with the idea that you're doing something for you because you want to look a better away and it's going to make you feel better. It's like, no, baby. You have everything you need. You are you have everything you already need. Nobody wants to have these conversations. Nobody wants to tell y'all that you don't need surgery. You need a fucking therapist and a mirror and some positive ass affirmations and some time. We all have insecurities. We all have body dysmorphia after looking at BBL bodies on the internet for the past fucking decade. But be strong enough to choose your life over the vanity of this time. Like, now does the extra skin or fat really matter when you're not here now you know and I understand y'all that there may have been any number of reasons why she had complications doesn't mean the surgeon wasn't a good surgeon but it is just a matter of this is still a risk that you're taking simply for a look simply for vanity's sake, so you can quickly look a certain way versus working out and strengthening your body again and strengthening your core again because you're going to need all of that strength to pick up the damn kids and run after them. You'd rather go get surgery so you can look a certain way and then you're going to take, even if she had lived, y'all, the time that it takes you to recover Time away from your kids, lack of ability to deal with them. Why is that the option you take? Instead of something like working out that will help you get your mind right, help you physically get stronger so you can carry your kids all over the damn place like you're going to have to. I know, you know, I'm not speaking to her right now, but I hope I'm speaking to y'all because there's always somebody in the comments. There's always somebody waiting on approval so that they can go and get their surgery. I really want better for y'all. For us. I would really like for us to love ourselves a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? I really, really would. I know she was, I know I had seen her I had seen her. I, I didn't know that that was his baby mom, but I had seen her before. And it's just since it's been all over social media, I put those two things together. Thank you, Dina Dean, for the super chat. My sandbox best friend passed last year from a tummy tuck, hernia repair, and lipo all at once. She died on the anniversary of my mother's death. That's so terrible. <clears throat> and I I just want us to care more about living. I I just want us to care more about living. I swear. I, I don't want us to feel bad about the decisions we've made. You know, if you already got it, girl, you got it already. Maintain it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying any of this to make anybody feel bad. But I, I want y'all so badly to care more about y'all lives than y'all do about looking good in pictures or 
looking good, period, when, you know, niggas be lucky to have you. <laughs> Wrinkled stomach, okay? Flat ass and all. Nigga, you be lucky to dive into the tresses of my witness. It don't matter what it look like. I know what it's going to feel like. And most of the time, you niggas is closing your eyes anyway. You can't even see. <laughs> what the fuck? So I, I implore y'all, when y'all start feeling bad about y'all bodies, go take a damn walk. Go work out. Go do something to, to help your body. Go get some endorphins going. Go get some damn vitamin D. Go outside. Okay? Fuck, read a good book. Go pick up the, the color purple. Go read the color purple, y'all. That damn book, I swear for God, I am outdone by how big the movie is and how the movie missed some of the life gems that they was giving you in it. Like, it's only in the book. They always said, if you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. They make a movie about it and y'all just totally forget that Alice Walker wrote a whole damn novel. <laughs> With all of her life lessons in it. Okay? Things I feel like plague us and plague people. Writing it in books. Find something else to do. Okay? Listen. Come on now. Yes, indeed, Zav. Your prep days we had. So come on, Renique. Okay? Come on, my good girl. Listen. All right, y'all. Um, Rest in peace to this lady. You know? And, and I... It hurt my feelings so much, y'all. It hurt my feelings so much. Because it just don't make no sense. It's just senseless. Oh, Lord. I need to, girl, like the video or something so we can move on to Martell and all of that dumb shit. Okay, y'all. Um, girl, if you read it, if you read the color purple as a child, you need to go pick it up again. You need to go pick it up again, girl. <laughs> Listen, that damn book, I swear for God, it is just and y'all, okay, so I'm about to do this, but I, I want to implore. Okay, that's the word that's in my mind right now. I would love for y'all to please go and support Queen Sheba's channel and to follow her and, um, you know, join her channel, become members, whatever y'all want to do to support. She has really great content. Um, I enjoy her content. She's one of the people that I have started to listen to on a, you know, kind of weekly basis now. Um, so shout out to her. She did what a lot of us did not have the energy to do, which is to interview Martel Hope. Okay. And I really want y'all to make sure y'all go and support her channel because I don't want it to seem like we just fit in a, you know, take views from this lady. So please, I'm going to put it on double speed and we just going to have, you know, some commentary on the said situation. Okay. Um, because that's what was on my spirit today. <laughs> that's what I wanted to do but yes um okay yeah so the color purple is gonna be one of my next now that we're growns and in that review I'm going to do a contrast in comparison to the book um and I am going to watch the ultimatum queer love I haven't been able to sit down and watch it yet but hopefully tonight me and Lyric can sit down and watch it um, because I do want to see it. I want to see what the lesbian girls are giving. Um, shout out. It's Pride Month. Um, so, you know, girls, if you see me out somewhere, you know, and you're my type, you know, say hi. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this, shall we? What's up? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Listen, what's in your cup? Because you you came with a glass of wine. What are you drinking? Let me get my little hey, drink. Hey, listen. This wine <laughs> 
That wine that he ain't selling to nobody. Well, calm me down and let me just, you know, just be steady moving, you know? It's 13.5. It's my wine. Well, here is here, salute. Is that your... Why is he always quoting the alcohol content level? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, my God. Something is wrong with him. He always saying this. That's not the name of it. Why are you calling it 13.5? That's not the name of it. <laughs> That is the alcohol content. He's not even a drinker. And he's so proud that this damn wine has a 13.5 alcohol content. I cannot take it, y'all. Your it Ines is. wine that you're drinking? It is. It is. It is. It is. Yes. You said a 13.5? Yeah. Hey, look, I've taken a couple sips of it already. I'm already feeling it, too. <laughs> so we about to have a little fun. Okay, wait. Before I continue, how is the sound going? Because I feel like I'm about to... I want to make sure that we hearing this shit good. I don't want no interference. Hold on. <laughs> I don't want no damn interference. Okay. Listen. Hold up. And he gonna make me go downstairs and get my wine, but I think I might go to the gym after this. So I'm I'm not really trying to uh. <laughs> I'm not really trying to get on that level because I was going to go downstairs and get my new favorite. Well, it's not my new favorite. It's a it's a recent favorite. Uh, my red, you know, my red wine that I like, girl. Um, I drink nice wine. So I was going to go and look and see with the uh the percentage on my Josh Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve North version. Okay, because there's different reserves for the Josh brand. Josh is my fave. Okay. All right. Hold up. So I'm about to play it. Let me know if y'all can hear it clearly. The fact that he thinks that if people aren't on his side about things that that they're biased, I do. You know what? I'm going to leave it alone because I feel like there are like there are there. Y'all couldn't hear it. OK, there are millimeters. There are people out there, girl. There are there are people out there, girl. Um, I'm just not one of those girls. Um, hold up. Um, but other never, I will be. I, you know what, Martel? I don't do that. Cheers. I love that. Cheers. Oh, You're yeah, already starting yeah. off right. He's yeah. starting. That's great. That you know yeah. what? I love that forever and ever. And yeah. uh, with that being said, people have so many questions. They're like, "Hey, Queen, how did you get this interview?" But before we get into all of that, tell the people. Hey, she, hey, she paid me my fee, y'all. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> she paid me my fee. Did y'all hear that part? It's muffled low. I think y'all are a little behind, so I'm gonna give it a second because I, I just changed something. And I'm seeing audio, so it should have started to work. Okay, y'all can hear it. Okay, good, 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 good. Girl, talking about his fee. Talking about his fee. <laughs> Marto, you better clear that shit up right now. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, uh, oh, it was no fee pay, okay? <laughs> All right, thank yeah. you. Thank you. But listen, where are you tuning in from tonight? We know you go back and forth between Atlanta, Huntsville. Where are you at right now? She absolutely is wearing male shirt. <laughs> Just noticed it. <laughs> Y'all so funny. She said she was a melamina. Okay, God said push through. I'm in Huntsville. Okay. Yeah, I'm in Huntsville. Yeah, been um we back on the ground working um filming Love Marriage Huntsville. So Okay. So, here. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any Huntsville folks in the building? If so, let Martel know you are here representing for That's Huntsville, so Alabama. All right. So listen, let me ask you this because people are wanting to know how did you end here with a mellow meter? How did Queen Sheba and Martel end up in the same room? Girl, I really want to know. <laughs> so tell people, well, how did you get here? How? Well, well uh, uh, to be honest, um, so right now it's more of, um, I think Melody did a, um, an interview with you recently. So I, I think it, I need to- It was to, a while. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, my, you know, my PR reached out to you and um, just for me to, to jump on with you and really just try to, to tell my side of certain stories, to defend myself and not to, not to bash Melody because we, we're not- we're See, okay. Everything he's doing right now is reading as lie to me. It's reading as I'm self-conscious. I'm trying to come off as if I am truthful and I have integrity, but I really don't. So when he's talking, all I hear is cap. Out of space um, in terms of co-parenting and I'm trying to keep it there. I almost said, you know, I don't want to do the interview um, because you know, Melly, she's, she's, she's all woman, you know, she can um, be emotional and things like that at times. And the slightest thing that I say or interview that I do, you know, it can, it can put us in a, in a bad place. And I'm not trying to get in bad places anymore, you know, because um, we do have four children that we share together. And I'm trying to say in, in a good place, you know. So, so right now, you know, I'm not going to bash her. I, I really don't even want to say anything. I, I want to just turn the camera off and just walk away, for real. Well, for don't real. do that because you're here now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> just saying just in terms of, 
why want our relationship to go? You know, our friendship, our whatever, you know, when it comes to uh, co-parenting, things like that. So, yeah. Well, it's really good to know that you both are in somewhat of a good space. And I know you said you did not want this interview to go there. We most certainly will not take it there. Uh, but you know, the queen is the queen and she reigns in her castle. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm being sarcastic. So it's all good over here. We're going to be fair. We're going to ask you some really great questions that people are wanting to know about you, who you are <laughs> outside the camera, who you are as a man, who you, they have so many questions. And then we're going to work in and weave in some of those tough, right? Some yeah, of those well, tough yeah. conversations and questions, but I feel like you can handle it. The amazing thing is that, you know, I'm, I'm pretty transparent. You know, I think that's why our show has, has done so well over the years because, um, my transparency Thank when it comes you. to my life, um, relationships, or anything that I'm doing right or wrong. To be clear, to be clear, you didn't want to tell us about your life. Mel decided to tell us about your life. You have since been quite upset with her for being honest about your life. So don't not, and this is what we talk about when we say he takes anything that Mel does and takes credit for it as if it was his decision when it was not. Are we clear? Are you guys hearing me? Seeing me clearly, girl? All right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm open to it, you know? So yeah, I'm here for it. All right. So let's get this party started. Let's do you it. know, um, a lot of viewers had a lot of questions about you when they learned that you would be in the palace tonight. And, and as, as we're warming you up, right, as we transition into this interview, a lot of things that came up that they feel like the show does not show about you, who you are. They want to know the good, the bad, and the stuff that people would be surprised to know about you. So yeah. if you could just talk about who you are, forget <laughs> Love and Marriage Huntsville. Who yeah. is Martel as a man and as a person? I'll let you start there. I mean, well, you know, first, um, I'm a god fearing man. You know, when I, when I first met Melody, you know, that's one of the things that... Pause. Thank you, Sharzai Cookie, for the super chat. He always say him and Mel are in a good place, but then some mess come out that totally contradicts what he says. Thank you, because he's a liar. So, okay, I'm using this as an example. Everybody listen. Hold up. I wish I had something that I can use a pointer. Okay, did you hear what he just said there? The first thing he said about himself is what? He's a man of God. That's what he said. Okay, so women... When you hear that, when you hear that, no, bullshit is about to come after. I'm going to say 90% of the time. There is a 10% where that might be followed by something that is godlike, okay? But I want everyone, when they, because I tell y'all this all the time, when we're on Ready to Love, and I tell y'all, the first thing he starts talking about is he's God-fearing. Oh, oh, I know what that means. <laughs> Red flag number one. <laughs> Check it off. <laughs> because basically what he's about to do is use God to control you. Let's go in for a song. Okay, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Somersault, thank you for the super chat. Taking a moment from this mess to be is you don't glow, Dagnet. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I took it to church, you know, and we continue to go to church every Sunday, you know, when we build our family and things like that, you know. He um, took her to man. church. And, um, you know, I do love the Lord and I feel the Lord and all that kind of stuff. Did y'all see he took her to church? Did y'all hear how he just took responsibility for her faith? I took Melody to church because before, before I got with Melody, she wasn't going to church. Right. Melody's mom never brought her to church. I don't believe that. Okay. But do y'all hear him taking responsibility? Do you hear him taking the credit? for this lady and their family being in the church. Now, this is a man that then proceeded to have a affair, which is a commandment, motherfucker. It's not even just a rule in the Bible because there are a whole bunch of rules in the Bible that aren't commandments. You know how y'all feel about gay people? That's not a commandment. Y'all be real mad about the gay part. But I would like to, I would like to remind y'all that when God made the 10 commandments in the Bible, those were his top 10 offenses. <laughs> And y'all do all of that shit all the time. But love to come and run for somebody about some gay shit. Okay, Lord. Okay, Lord have mercy. And he does the same thing. You remember how he doesn't want Marcus, the gay brother, to watch the babies because he's gay. So worried about that. Yet the children are around your angry ass baby mama, Arian, who don't like their mama. That feels more unsafe to me. It feels more unsafe for my kids to be around a woman who I know don't like me. 
Girl, let's continue you know. on. I'm having and, a good time. You know, time. Um, my, my pride in the possession is my, my children. You know, um, I take pride in being a great father. You know, I put forth the effort. And, um, you know, I thought... Children aren't possessions. I just want to remind y'all of that because a lot of y'all don't know that. Children aren't pos possessions. You don't possess them. They pass through you. I try to be the best dad I can possibly be when it comes to, um, to my children, all five of them, you know? Um, Mel and I, we do seven days off, seven days off. And then Maverick, you know, um, I have him the days I have my other children, but then I still have him um, throughout um, any other week too, though, you know? So, yeah. Now, how many times is Ariane going to have to tell this nigga that her son's name is not Maverick? <laughs> that girl said that baby name is Baby Knox. Stop calling that lady baby the name that you made up because you wanted to be in the M family with you and Mel. Because <laughs> you know that's why all the kids' names are M's because Mel and Martell have M's at the beginning of their names. So all of the kids should be named with an M. And he was trying to do the same thing with that baby. The triangulation of announcing your son, Knox, with Arion by posting a picture of you and Sugar Mama. The triangulation of that. Niggas be acting stupid, but when it comes time to manipulate women, be smarter than a motherfucker. You know, and you know, I stay trying to recreate myself, you know, because this TV thing is different for me. You know, this social media stuff is, is different. You know, I'm not a person who, I don't, I don't like social media. You know, I know there's one thing that Melody know about me too. Like it's, it's hard for me to defend myself. Like it's hard for me to do these interviews. I don't like this shit, you know what I'm saying? I don't like, um, I mean, TV is, is cool and um, it's growing on me a little bit, um, but sometimes I'd rather not. You know, I like to just go and work hard, you know, get dirty out there, work hard, come home to a, a cooked meal, spend time with my children and, you know, in, enjoy my family, go to sleep, wake up, do it again. You know, that's what I've done all my life. You know, I've always been a hard worker. I've always been a provider. I've always been a protector, you know, so, um, yeah. Lies. Anytime he lies, he's going to take a sip. <laughs> you said Watch. come home to a home cooked meal. And I think everybody in the chat could agree. We all like a good ass meal. If yeah, you have to come definitely. home. Yes. What would you like? What, what's your favorite meal to come home to? So sometimes I'm like a kid at heart, you know, um, Melly started doing it. I, I got I to gotta go back to Melly at certain times because, you know, that was like a year, you know what I'm saying? You, you got to go back to my mom. My mom used to make me a sandwich. I don't know if y'all know about Sloppy Joes and like the corn and the sweet peas. So my mom used to do that. Then Melly started doing that. And um, so my mom back doing it for me a little bit now, though. <laughs> we call it a goulash. Is that a goulash? Like a goulash? That's what we call it. I've never heard of that. That's some Louisiana type stuff? Maybe Texas. Te oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Sloppy Joe. It's not the same. Goulash has vegetables in it the last time I checked. Me too, but mostly like corn and stuff like that um succotash if you will is what i think she's talking about i'm not sure but either way child i don't know or yeah sloppy joe. Talking about yeah, okay a sloppy joe so <laughs> yeah. um but look so you you talked about who you were you still refer to who you are as being a married guy let me let me shift you a little bit if you were just in this world before you got married before you had children were you an only child are you an only child do you have siblings tell us a yeah. little bit more about that yes. yeah what's all running for you asking that question right now is um, i have a younger brother and um, we five years apart and so he's he's filmed a, filmed a couple um, episodes with me this season so far. Um, we trying to I'm trying to like switch his mindset around in terms of becoming a, an entrepreneur. Um, you know he's been kind of like living a fast life. And, and um, please leave your brother alone. Please leave your brother alone. Say Martell brother wherever you at. Don't listen to this nigga. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been going so, so, so well for him. But you know I'm trying to switch it around, trying to get That's him involved in the community. That's I'm going to um, different expos and trying to get him inspired to do better in life. So yeah, so I do have a brother and I have a sister. Um, and she's what like a year younger than me and yeah you the oldest so you the fucking oldest <laughs> where are these people where are these people <laughs> who do they belong to are they marlene's children or are they your daddy's children i need these questions answered who grew up with this nigga <laughs> I need to know, what is your life like? My God, who grew up with this nigga as a big brother? That's insane. Thank you, Courtney, for the super chat. This seems to be his pattern. Heard Melody look crazy. Go on and I'm a good, humble guy tour. Also, an inter also, as the interview went on, his mask slipped and you could see. I know, that's why I can't wait to get to it. Thank you. I know, y'all. I just, I felt like we needed to go through this one. Like, I felt like I, there wasn't a way that I was going to be able to really, like, cut this up. So, that's why we just up here. And please, y'all, go subscribe to Queen Sheba's channel and support her, okay? And give it a view over there as well, okay? 
Um, Lauren Michelle, thank you so much for the super chat. She asked about him and he keeps talking about Mel. Because I don't think he has ever done the work to figure out who he is. I think that's a part of it. Um, okay, I think I did get an email today, but I haven't went back to check my email yet. But I saw something pop up, but I I'll check it later. Okay, I got you. Because I, I have to do that after this. How come we didn't see that on the show? How come? I feel like what, we don't what, what know part? anything about you. I, I feel I, like I we've gotten so caught up in the drama and the producers have have yeah. produced drama, 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 Thank right, you between you and Melody, that it's kind of gotten way off of who you both are as individual people. So can we come to expect a little bit more about you in a positive light and who you are and your family and the things that you're trying to do with your brothers? Yeah, I mean, I give, I give hats off to um, Own. You know, I had a, um, had a conversation with Own, um, with I think, Own. What, last season about switching the narrative That's around because, you know, I've gotten tired of all the negativity surrounding me um, because, like, the, the man that I am, the person I am, isn't all that negativity. You know, a lot of times I, I say it, like, you know, it's almost like you got to take two or take three and put my back and be against the wall to see like that, that angry, upset Martel Hope, you know, but again, you know, that's not me. So had a, had a conversation with own, um, the legal team and things like that, you know, along with my attorney uh, and, and, you know, so we're looking to switch everything around for a more positive. Okay. So what that sounds like to me is that the way he was handling melody probably really did. And whatever happened at the reunion that nobody's talking about, there have been things going on behind the scenes that we have not seen with Martel. I think the things with his son, you know, like there's a lot of stuff that's happened with him getting physical and getting aggressive and all of this, right? And so what he just explained is that he actually did have a sit down with the network, probably with Carlos and with his attorney. And that makes me feel like he's been reprimanded. That's why they went on that tour of let's trying to sweep it up and clean it up. I honestly feel like Carlos is probably fighting really, really hard to keep Martel on the show at this point. You know how everybody seems to be wondering why he's still on the show, considering how his relationship with Melody seems to be abusive and him being on the show allows him to be in a space with her so he can further abuse her. And this is what I want everybody else to realize that he does. And this is why I said it's not just about him being a cheater. Anybody can go and fuck somebody else and not be as fucked up as Martel. And the reason why I say that is because when Martel cannot fight his own battles, he has to go implore other people to help him. And because he often cannot fight his own battles, he always goes to get other people. So the way he used Arion, he incites anger and insecurity in, in, insecurity inside of Arion so that she will go and exact out his revenge on Mel. That's the exact reason why he asked her to put out that video of Mel and him. And we're, he's going to admit to that as well. He's not going to admit that he gave it to Arion to do, but he's going to admit that he threatened Mel with it. Okay, which is to me, that's that's enough to solidify the situation, which we already knew it was true because Mel confirmed it. But either way, and we also saw the stories going back and forth between them when the shit happened. So it wasn't like, you know, we only had Mel's word to go on. We actually were able to see this because as much as he doesn't like going to social media, he likes going to social media. <laughs> okay? So he used Arion to go after Mel, right? We've seen that in various ways. The sex tape is a version of that. Also, he uses the public for it. He uses the show. So whenever he decides to film scenes and he shows up to the birthday party to make Mel look like the bad guy because he's just a good guy. Why isn't she letting him see his kid? She's bitter. Everything that y'all say bad about her on social media when people post those clips, those are the thoughts that he wants everybody to think about her. And it's really him putting her into a corner and then the cameras catching her reaction and how she's responding to this break in her boundaries. But everybody wants her to just get over it and act like, you know, act like nothing bad is actually happening. And that's the pattern, y'all. The pattern in our society is when something is wrong, when something is fucked up, when you are mistreating somebody, when you are mistreating women, 
is to act like it's not happening. And specifically in the relationship between black men and black women is to take the abuse and be quiet about it and act like it's not happening and protect him from people seeing who he really is. And that's what he expects. And that tells me that that's what his mother did for him a lot. She may not have given him the nurturing or the provision that he needed, but she definitely probably spoke him up to people as much as she could. And he learned how to feel good about perpetrating your life versus actually working for it and getting it. It probably makes him feel better to tell people things are a certain way than to actually work for it and obtain it. And I think that is the difference between he and Mel. So when people always want to say they're the same, I'm like, if they're the same, then why isn't she doing the same thing to him that he's doing to her? And Queen Sheba made a great point. When we gonna, you know, we gonna get to it, but she made a great point. Yeah, I'm, um, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna be hope, running you know, it. So they might bring in my family, with it or so don't my family, like show how we trying to navigate through certain things to um, Lady T. Yeah, to showcase like me who, who I really am. I love that. I love that. Yeah. See, we would have never known that had we not talked to you. We would have never known that you're working behind the scenes really hard to say, hey, there's more to me. I, yeah. That's important that I showcase that. So that's why I'm glad that you're here today. Yeah, so that, again, I'm so sorry. Go but, no, go yeah, ahead. yeah, because again, I mean, it's been what four years? It's been four years that I've been I've been drugged. You know, it's like shit. I haven't cheated in. In what three four years? You know, so why are you still talking about that? You know, what well, I'm hell, you've been drugged us too now, Martel. We we all had our highs and lows together. We've grown together. You know what I mean? Yeah, the audience yeah. may have drug you, given you a big headache, but it's it's a growing pain for the viewers. Yeah. It's a growing pain for the cast. But yeah. the, the point is that he you're trying like to bring that. it together. Would that oh, be? Fair? He didn't like that she she said that you give it as well. Oh, one hundred percent. I'm bringing it together. I brought it together. You know, I'm, um, you. I'm on a different playing field now. Hi, you know, um, as long as you know, Mel and I, we get along with one another. Thank you. Oh, yeah. We, 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 it's gonna be awesome. Was it somebody becoming a man? Um, so there's a lot of questions that came in regarding who you are, and a, and a lot of people were interested to know, like, are they interested? Your relationship. Are they interested? Yeah, they are. They really are. They really are. Oh, okay. Um, so they wanted to know, like, how, how, you know, growing up, I think you, you shared with the viewers, you know, uh, about your wine and the reason why you dedicated <clears> the name and, and just the project to your. Okay. Okay. So hold up. Let Let's talk. Mel was happy with her narc until he had another baby and she still got pregnant again to keep that narc. Okay. Okay. That, that's a, that's a cute way to think about it. Okay. <clears throat> Why do you think she was happy? Women stay in marriages all the time, even when they're not happy. We actually think it's a part of marriage sometimes to not be happy. People usually aren't married. <laughs> I mean, aren't happy in their marriages. Like that, that's what most people understand about marriage, that it, it's not always the happiest thing. So <clears throat> I don't know why you would think that she was happy with it, but the fact that you identify him as a narc means that you have to recognize that if she was with him and loves him, then she was probably abused by him because he's a narcissist. So why is there still no empathy for her in your statement ask yourself that question if we're going to admit because she's fake as okay how is that a fact how is that a fact because you don't really know her right you don't really know her so i think it's funny when people call someone they don't know fake because you aren't privy to who they are anyway so how do you know if they're presenting themselves as real or fake when you don't really know who they are so you don't know if what they're presenting to you is real or fake because you don't have a reference point i just want y'all to think sometimes That's grandmother but they were curious to know how did you deal with not being um raised by your mom so am i i'm full-time because that's a lot of times the story in african-american communities so now that you're an adult and you look back what challenges did you have from that that you've you've had to overcome and now that you look back you probably were like damn that was hard anything that you're comfortable sharing i mean well i think that a lot of black people us um we have some of the same stories you know like we didn't have a father in our life a lot of us probably was at our grandmother's house a lot you know um you know my mother had me when she was 17 years old that was a challenge in itself you know a kid having a kid i can't even imagine that um it was tough because i had my first child when i was 30. you know me saying i'm doing everything right and now like i'm getting older i'm like damn i wish i had my kids early <laughs> you know what i'm saying um, but why? I don't know. Okay, don't know. that's all right. So yeah, um, I, I think y'all have have had challenges. Um, okay, you know, uh, growing up and things like that. 
Um, let's kind of jump around a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit of love and marriage, Huntsville, a little bit of hot topics that you've been placed in or you place yourself in. But one of the questions I want to ask you, now that you look back, Martel, do you ever look back at some of the things that you, you, you're now known for and think to yourself, damn, what the hell was I thinking? Well, tell me, what, was I, what, what am I known for? A cheater? You tell me. You know you better than I do. No, I mean, I, you know what? So the thing is... What do you feel like people have a misconception? Or maybe they hit it... Well, well, then I'm a horrible person. Then I'm okay. a horrible person. Okay. Um, like, I'm like... um. Well, I guess I was using that. Like, I mean, everybody like, well, some of the people. Um, I guess people that's, that's room for notice so, so hard. They, they look at me and feel like I'm like the scum of the earth and that I'm not a good person. And like, like I say, and, and know, a lot of people who know me. You know what's so funny, though, that you say this? If, if this is the case, shout out to my homegirl that just obtained her attorney so that she can divorce her narcissist ass husband. <laughs> okay, listen. Shout out, shout out to the fact that she obtained her attorney on that day. That's what personally, I'm, it's like if you eat and you will love it because that's the, the picture that has been painted. It's it's not me in real life. You follow me? It's like um, you know, if you know a lot of people that's around my my son at times, they're like, oh, he's such a gentleman. I mean, it's like I put that in, I've instilled that into my son. I'm instilled that into my my two year old as well in terms of being a gentleman. That's the, the person I am. I've always been a, a respectful and um and, and just a person that's easy to get along with. You know, I don't I don't burn bridges. Um, you know, a lot of people that's been my friends, they've been my friends for for years, um, 20, 30 years. You know, I don't I don't fall out with people. Um, I mean, unless it's something they did, you know, but I mean, I just, I just want people to What? <laughs> I don't fall out with people unless it's something that they did. Child, what is he talking about? No, for real. I mean, I'm not as bad as you might, you might think you see a clip from mm -hmm. TV, you know, they, they chop that thing up to paint the narrative to go along the show. When you, you know? say they chop that thing up, who, who chops that it, thing no, up? No, I'm just saying edit. edit. Oh, okay. God. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but, but sometimes I'll, I'll be honest. Sometimes I'll be real. Um, I do, I do get angry. I do get upset. I'm, I'm a masculine man. It's like certain things I don't, I don't deal with. You know what I'm saying? And, and for me, it's nothing wrong with that. What is, I, I don't even like statements like that. I don't even like statements like that. Like, I'm a masculine man. I'm not going to, oh, shut up. Ain't nothing masculine about a man letting a woman take care of him. Shut up. Um, if I'm going to express myself in certain ways, of, if I'm upset or angry, I'm going to show that. Let somebody know that I, I, dis, I dislike that. I don't like you treating me like that. I don't want you coming at me like that. I don't want you to think it's okay for you to treat me that way. No. So, yeah. But have you ever had a moment? Because I know I have. I have. See, there's a uh, there's a pattern to the way he talks that tells me everything I need to know. Like he knows he's being full of shit, and he is like bolstering his confidence in this moment, but it's not real. I want to a moment. Ago. Yeah, where I, I had one two weeks ago at work. Hold on, I didn't know in the moment I was tripping, but two weeks <laughs> later I was like, damn, I was in my feelings. I tripped out. Have you ever had a moment where you look back and you just like, damn, what the hell was I thinking? What the hell was I doing? Well, you know, to be real, I've, I've had a few instances on the show. Hell no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't feel out tripping. I sure don't. Period? Nope. In life? Hell Come on now. Not. Oh, you're talking about just in life? No, I'm talking yes, about certain I'm... things you guys seen, though. You know what I'm saying? So he doesn't feel like he's ever been doing too much when he's been screaming in women's faces and doing too much. He's never felt like he was doing too much. And everything, he doesn't have any, <clears throat> any regrets either. I don't know why people always ask him if he regrets you know he regrets anything he always says he doesn't regret anything he always says that i told you we talking everything I, I, I don't think i've overreacted to anything okay. i don't think i overreacted to anything I, I think anytime that you guys are like damn why are you tripping it was a reason for it so for it. Yeah. that that right there y'all that's what we like to call a lack of accountability you know how everybody's always talking about accountability on social media when a person can't even admit that they overreact sometimes which most people can overreact sometimes we may overreact in different ways like we feel anxiety or we get angry or we cry all of those all of those things can be overreactions in certain moments and the fact that he can't even admit that that he has done that ever lets you know that if he's wrong he's never going to take full accountability for anything clock it recognize it it's a pattern you know you guys might not have seen it you, you guys might not know it but martel knows it i know okay. what happened yeah okay. so that's i'm not fair. on that boat <laughs> i'm not on that boat that's fair so they want to know your favorite food your favorite food i'm gonna say popeyes but I'm, I'm gonna tell you why so but at least we know somebody's cooking for you now at least we know somebody's yeah, yeah, cooking for yeah, you yeah. now yeah. chef danielle chef danielle she, she's been cooking for um, cooking for us for a while now but so um, what's your favorite? who is us i guess him and the kids okay i'm so I'm, i don't have a favorite food i don't have a, oh i gotta have this give me the top three you gonna give me some today give me the top three Popeyes. And I'm saying Popeyes. But this is a lot of men's issue. A lot of men are not self-aware because you don't know yourselves because you think anything introspective is feminine. <laughs> 
You think any time that you have to sit with yourself and, and figure something out about yourself and find out what your flaws are, like, you don't want to do that. You, you want to have this God complex that you can't do anything wrong and that everybody else is just wrong. The problem with that is that you're not God. So here we are. Narcissism. That may not be it. I'm trying to get away from and all this. And how you food. got a chef? You ain't got no money. I'm trying to get away from all the greasy stuff. I'm trying well, to. We saw you eat it online. Listen. Hey, listen, listen. I'm coming out with an underwear line, right? And I'm trying to be my own <laughs> model. And then, you know, we talk about only things and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to get my body all the way right. So Popeye's out the, out the equation right now. So what's your go to? I, I don't have it. I'm so you sorry. Eat I, 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 I'm so you easy. I'm so easy. You know, I'll. I eat um any type of chicken. Okay. I eat any type of steak. I'm trying to stay away from beef though, for real. But it's okay. like, I'm just so I'm so easy when it comes to food. So easy. It's like I don't even care. Just as long as it's semi, semi healthy, it tastes okay. I'm down for it. You know, I'm, I'm real. Yeah, but you're not easy enough to cook your own fucking food, right? Right? Because that's such a big deal for you that somebody cook for you. It doesn't matter what they cook as long as they cook for you, right? That's when it comes to that. That's fair. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't have a top three. I don't have a. That's all right. One. That's okay. Yeah. I'm going to go off what you're saying because you said whoever's cooking for me now. So now that you said that, because you said it, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you something. Would you marry you? I would. Flaws and all. Of course. Why? He is lying his ass off right here. He would not marry himself because everything, everything he wanted from Mel, he was not fully providing. So that's why I don't think that he could be with himself. Cat. Why? Of course. I, I would definitely marry me. Um, because I feel that, I mean, I do have a lot to, to offer. And then, too, I, I'm, I'm everything that a, that a man should be. Every, everything. Every, every single thing. You know, I... <laughs> mm. I don't know, y'all. I feel like my bar for, for what a man should be is not in hell. So I feel like I can firmly disagree with this shit. I don't care what y'all talking about. Um... Yeah, no, I'm sorry. If just having a dick, yeah, nah. I had a, um, oh, had a mishap. Awesome? I, love I think we all have mishaps and, you know, mistakes. But damn, when you look deep down inside who I am, hell yeah, I married me. So what would you think of yourself? At, at, at heart. Um, I mean, I want to marry to somebody that's going to, you know, protect me and going to provide, going to go out here and work hard for me and make sure that I'm going to be living my best life, you know? Mm. Um, I want to hey, mar Erica. marry somebody that yes, better treats course. his mom well. I want to marry somebody that takes care of his children. You know, on and off the camera, on and off Instagram. Do you treat your mom well? Because I honestly feel like naming that wine after your grandmother was a passive aggressive way to slight your mother. I do. But, and I do think you often passive aggressively shade your mother. Instagram. I mean, like in real life, you want what's best for them, you know? Um, I do want somebody to, um, to respect me. I understand that. You know, we're going to have differences and things like that in life because we're, we're different. We're, we're not the same. We're different people. You know, we're going to have those differences. So I understand, you know, we'll have these little arguments and stuff like that here and there. But overall, man, yeah, I think, I think I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good dude. You know Is that what, what you would say to yourself at the altar? <laughs> overall? I mean, yeah. yeah, you were looking I, at I, you. I have a good heart. I, I treat people well. You know, you can ask any of my friends. You know, I'm, I'm a true friend. We could. And they would say that you always be threatening them with their tea. <laughs> you know, I, it's not that I can just say, oh, man, I'll be a good friend to you. No, I've, show, I've shown over the years I'm a good friend. You know, people that are my friends, they will give you lists. They'll give you a few things that Martel's shown that he's a true friend, a genuine person. You know, people look at my mom. Everybody loves my mom because she's such a genuine person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I got that from her. And um... your mom is not genuine. Your mama been fake liking Melody for years. <laughs> and and my kids, they got that from yeah, Melody, she's a good person too. But I'm just saying. Hold know. on, say that louder now. We'll get the head on it. Say it louder. Uh. <laughs> so listen, okay. So speaking of marriage, I've heard you on several interviews. You said, I'm getting married by the end of the year. I'm gonna propose. Who is she? Well, I don't know who she is right now, but hmm. I don't know, you know, this is what art is, man. I, I miss being married. You know what I'm saying? Cause He's so proud of himself for catching that. Why does he act like being married? Do you know why you, you want to be married, Martel? Because you don't want to be alone. Because you don't like yourself enough to just be by yourself. That's true tea. True tea is that Martel don't even like his fucking self. Because if he liked himself, 
then he would have gotten his shit together. He would have his own place. His own businesses would be doing well. Even if he was fucking with Ariane still, he would probably have created a more stable life for himself by this point. The fact that he has not created any real stability for himself, if not for the fact that somebody wishes he was gay for pay, Girl, listen, I'm trying to understand why the nigga still got a job at this point. <laughs> that was the force just wasn't like in my mind for real. You know, even at, even at one point, you know, I know I mentioned that to Melody that I wanted divorce, but like, you know, you're just going through shit at times, you know? You know, when you're going through things in a relationship, you say things you don't mean, you do things you don't mean, and it's like, damn, being married is beautiful. You know, I, I think back, I mean, being married is a beautiful thing, coming home to somebody and you know, you got overall, you know, you guys get along, do things, go places, building things. When I say building, I'm not talking about like, like houses and shit. I mean, like building your family, you know, when, you, when you're going on vacations and vacations, it's, it's meaningful, you know, so like right now, I really. I'm going to tell y'all right now, I, I blocked that person, but I just want to say anybody that thinks that Mel and Sheree are the same are insane. I just want to say that. We can say a lot of things about Melody. Melody is passive aggressive love, okay? Melody is very controlled and she uses her control to make sure you don't know what the fuck going on with her, okay? Absolutely, positively. But one thing ma'am is going to do is make sure she's straight. She gonna make sure whatever she's trying to get done, done. It's gonna get done. Sheree, she can't pay is not on the same page at all. That's why she's not the one that can be the wife. That's why he can't marry her. It's not just her age. It's her age too. Because so, y'all be very clear. Be very clear that Martell Holt is a Kevin Samuels fan. Be very clear. So when you know that, you know that he wants a woman that's either his age or younger. It doesn't have to be that, you know, under 35 bullshit. But he's not going to marry and be in a relationship outwardly with a woman like Sheree. She can only be used to get on. He's not going to really, really be with her. And I keep telling y'all, I don't think Martell and Sheree are even having sex. I, I don't even think it's I don't even think it's that. Candy but sweet, thank you for the super chat. He wants someone to provide and protect. Shaking my damn head. Yes. Which is exactly what Carlos is doing for him right now. Don't go on vacations because it's not meaningful, if, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Um, how important, to the ladies that are single in the chat, how important is sex? I gotta put, I gotta put this wine down. Gotta, no, put it down, put it in front of you, whatever you need to do. Look, you're in the pot, I told you. We have real grown up ass conversations. Hey, listen, I, I'll drink only a small portion of wine. This shit got me. It man. got you. You feeling good, it huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, like you didn't hit a blunt. <laughs> back in college? I don't smoke. Back no, I didn't smoke back then even. No, okay, all right. So listen, Martel, how, <laughs> I tell funny. you, you don't have a good time. How important? is sex in a marriage or a relationship to so the people yes, that are tuned in and they're wanting to know about partnership. How is important, how important is that to a man in a marriage or a relationship? So I, I, no, 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 I'm not a system. <clears throat> I think sex is as important as the, the husband or the wife makes it, if that makes sense. I can't say it's extremely important, but to me, I, I feel that if the husband or the wife- um, That was the reason you allegedly ruined your marriage. Every day, I mean, if that's, your, if that's your spouse, I mean, make it happen. I don't care if you, I mean, for me, I mean, I don't care if you're tired. I don't care if, just, just whatever, I, I feel that that moment could, it's so funny how he started off trying to present himself like he's not as much of an asshole as he is. And then the, the more he talks, the more it just kind of slips out. Because he just said it's as important as the couple makes it. But you're telling us that you don't give a fuck how tired she is. She still needs to be down there on her knees making you feel like you did something. It can be had, you know, just to, just to satisfy your mate. That's it. Okay, so now but we're going to make, 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 those, make those sacrifices at times, you know. I mean, I would. I have. You know, it's like, do your thing. You know, I'm tired, but do your thing. You feel me? So it is important. Is it important? Is it really important to oh, a man? That's what I'm trying to get at. Is it, of course, it's very important. I think it's, it, it, it's, it's, it can Do your thing. <laughs> mm, be important okay. to a woman, too. As, as okay, that's fair. It's, it's, it can be important it's, because everybody's different. Because some men might not view it as important. But the next man be like, hell, y'all gotta have that shit twice a day. And the one, some, certain women would say the same thing. Like, damn, I wanna have sex twice a day. But whoever they married to, I feel that you should make sure you take care of those needs if you're going to continue to be married to them. You know, because okay. it's, only, it's, it's supposed to be only the man and the woman, you guys, you know, it, it, you know, even though some people. So this is the misconception. The misconception in, is that there is an amount of sex that could have been provided that would make him not cheat on Melody. I want everybody to understand there was never going to be 
uh, enough dick suckage. It, there was never going to be enough lettuce. There was never going to be enough head. There was never going to be enough sex. There was never going to be enough getting down on her knees and looking up at him as if he's king of the fucking jungle. There was never going to be enough of that to fill his void because the void was there before she got there. He's just been looking and, and, and trying to find women, things, experiences to fill the hole. It's a large gaping hole that there be some fucking truth, maybe even a medication or two, might help him with. But because he is so like far gone in his delusion that he is perfect and nothing is wrong with him and he doesn't need to fix anything because Miss Marlene says so, he's never going to be any better. step out but it's not supposed to be that you take care of your mate no matter what that's that's how i always viewed it you know that no was... you don't take care of your mate no matter what you put your fucking mask on first you take care of yourself first pretty wings thank you for the super chat i'm tired but do your thing like what the fuck and don't get me wrong y'all as a married person, there are absolutely times when I'm too tired for sex, but we have it and I'm glad I had it. <laughs> so don't get me wrong. That messaging has a time and a place for it. But what it doesn't have is the allowance for y'all to make assault okay because people are married. And coercion is what? Assault. I'm gonna leave it right there. But yeah, that's how I view it. Yeah, no, we want to know because like I said, we're in a palace. We have adult conversations. We talk about sex. We yeah. talk about a little bit of everything over here. But that leads me to a tough question because if sex is important, one of the number one questions that I got that came through about you is they said you 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 amplified the fact that you were sexually pleased by Arion. So they want, they're wondering why y'all aren't married yet if that's important in a marriage. I mean, um, there's a lot of things that's important in a marriage, you know, you know? I mean, sex isn't everything. You know, I'm not even gonna look at Arion like it was just the sex either. You know, they, they should have amplified a lot of other things too though, you know? Um, I won't get off into all of that, but you know, it was a good conversation there, you know? Um, and then too, you know, when you're going through certain things in life or a relationship, you know, you try to see who can fill certain um, gaps or whatever, you know? And What did I just say? But I, I don't want to make it just seem like I just went to Aryan and this sex either. So whoever's saying that, I may want to excuse that, you know? I'm not here to disrespect nobody. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. You, we can disrespect Mel, but we can't disrespect Arian. That's probably because Arian has done something in his back door he doesn't want anybody to know about. I'm going to stop firing on all cylinders and shut up. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot of variables to make a, a marriage or um, a relationship, you know, strong. It's not I just agree. sex. It's not just I agree. sex. I mean, it's, it's re most for men, it's respect. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's respect for a man. And then sex probably is second, you know? So sex is, is even number one. You know, if a man is being disrespected, he will leave that situation way before him leaving the situation because he's not getting sex. Yeah. So yeah. I agree. It's, it's funny that I told my husband something on vacation the other day. And I can't remember. We were in Phoenix, Arizona. He keeps talking about respect. And it reminds me of the way I know that narcissistic people think that everything that they don't agree with, your boundaries are disrespect to them. So they're always speaking about how respect is so important so that when they tell you that your boundaries are disrespectful to them, then you will feel bad and you will relent on your boundaries. That's what that's about. And he did something and then I did it. He said, why are you doing that? I said, you just did it. Oh, I know what it was. I, I had like three glasses of wine and got really drunk. Ooh. And he was like, don't drink that much. Don't do right. what I do. Don't do what I do. I said, but you are the head. And naturally a woman will follow your lead, whether she means yeah. to or not. So if a man is drinking a lot, I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm just saying naturally, I didn't even know I had three glasses of wine. I went well over my limit. Right. Yeah. So do you feel like the man is the head? Like very briefly. And, and sometimes that, that, that will cause the woman to follow you. So when, when there's a strife in a relationship, should the man be looking at himself and say, hold up. Hold up. Y'all, she's using Where did I own, falter in my leadership? She's using his own bullshit rhetoric to, to like back him into a corner, right? All you care about is respect. You're a man, all of this. Okay, so you know that you have to be head of household, meaning that you have to lead by example. And a lot of y'all want to be head of household, but you don't want to lead by example. You want to just be able to tell people what to do. Chip, what the hell did I do wrong? 
Well, again, I mean, that, that's not favorite relationship, though. You know what I'm saying? But again, the man is the head of the relationship. The man should be, um, without a doubt, on the head. We, we built, we built for that. You know, we built to be um, just um, the protectors of the relationship, the protectors of the woman, the protector of the children. We're the protectors, so therefore, we should be always the head of our relationship or the marriage. You know, um, but you know, some people get out of that. <laughs> and, and just I think, to too, be that's clear, when some relationships are married. Just to be clear, um, I block people just because I feel like it, because it's like my channel. So, like, YouTube, like, really gives you a lot of freedom with that. Like, you know, you can literally decide if you want to see people in your chat or not. Like, if I, and honestly, it wasn't that I disagreed. I wasn't going to block you at first. Um, the reason why I blocked you was because everybody else in the chat kept saying to block you. Um, and I felt like, well, damn, if you were annoying like this much of the chat, then I guess you need to just go somewhere then, huh? Um, and I, I feel like you were trying to like troll. So you got blocked and then whatever the other pages got blocked. And you can come back and give me another view. And if you say something else and I feel like it, I'm going to block you again. And we can just keep doing this shit. Because <laughs> it's going to go sideways when people try to get out of who's the head. You know, but it, I'm not necessarily saying that the woman got, is the tail lighter, though. You know, sometimes you can work side by side. Sometimes um, I feel that. But no matter oh, what. Oh, you know, how he had to correct himself right then, because, you know, there were many times where you needed male to lead you. And that's where that whole provision thing comes in. You don't want to completely put a woman behind you as the head, because then you would have to actually produce and provide. And because you know that you can't do that to the to, you know, the effect that she can. You don't want to actually put her behind you the way you really want to because you need her to work. <laughs> like, But I feel that the man should always um, have that lead role. Yeah. Should always have that lead role. Okay, let's switch. I want to go to Love and Marriage Huntsville because that's oh, what a lot of people know you for. And when we talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville, who's your, per your favorite you person to film with? If they so said, hey, Martel, who you want to shoot a scene with? <clears throat> What's coming out of your mouth? The, the favorite person, my favorite person to film with. The guys. It's oh. the uh, listen, it's, it's, it's Maurice, Marceau, Big Lou. It's like when we get together, it's all and fun. It's thing. all laughter. It's all like we just. Women need protection from other men. And most of the time, men are too scared to fight other men. And then when y'all do fight on a woman's behalf, y'all make it the woman's fault. Like nobody should have been fighting for her. And especially black women. Let a, let a man come to a black woman's defense and watch y'all tear his ass up. Y'all, y'all never, y'all are never really protecting anybody. Like, let's just keep it a buck. Like, I'm, I'm just saying, y'all, not my husband, y'all. Um, just to be clear, you know, because I, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm throwing out a blanketed statement because I very much felt protected from society by my father. And I always feel protected whenever I am with my husband. But I also feel protected just as myself. And I also feel that my spiritual uh, protection protects us all and protects him even when he's not with me. See how that goes? Like, let everything just go. But you got to pick y'all. I just want to say that because a lot of times like y'all people act like women don't have any value because they don't, you know, they don't provide financial things, even though we know that they do. But the idea that what women bring to the table is not a value because you can't put a, a quantiful, you know, you can't put a number on it. But in essence, I know it's a it's a fact that my prayers protect my husband wherever he is all the time. His mother too. We're shooting a scene. But Martel, we're flying you on a private jet. You can only take one. Who you taking? Oh, shit. Who you taking? To be real, I ain't gonna tell you who I really would take. But let me. It has to be a guy though. <laughs> one, of, one of your yeah. cast members. Maurice. Maurice, All he's right. more level headed. Yeah, he's more know. level headed. And um, you know, he, he he's unbiased. Okay, so Maurice and you can you good? You good? We can hear you. You there you go. Yeah, yeah, you're good. So, Maurice. You, okay, so let's switch. Who holds you? The, who holds you accountable the most on the show? Whether I'm you like them or not, somebody else. You like? Oh, here Maurice. we go. Maurice. Maurice. Yeah, yeah. He holds, he holds me accountable. You know, make me a phone call and let me know if I was in the right or the wrong. Okay. Um, you know, he's like a, he's like a big brother to me. Okay. Know? Yeah. Outside of the show, this in real life, he's always been that. Um, yeah. So you know, hats off to him for that. So, they should yeah. show that. Okay. So for every, I just want to comment because I see this in the chat. For everybody that keeps acting like 
male knowing who Martel was or choosing to be with him means that it was okay for him to do what he did to her. Like, she left. You do understand that once somebody leaves, you can't keep blaming them for the time that they stayed because what they were doing was getting the strength to leave. So everybody that's talking about, oh, but Mel, oh, but Mel, Mel's accountability came in when she decided to take her children and leave. And she's not even asking for child support. He can't even provide for those kids. She literally took her children, even the one that she decided to have after their relationship was dissolving. She still decided to keep her baby, take her children, and go and take care of them just fine. Like Beyonce said, me and my baby going to be just fine. So to me, when Mel decided to leave and then move on and do better and take care of her and her children, that was her accountability. That was her taking responsibility for her choice to be in that relationship with him for as long as she was in it. But it's very weird to me that y'all get mad and y'all vilify young girls and off rip. Of course they can't. Their brains aren't even fully fucking formed yet. He doesn't even know how manipulative he's about to be yet. You turn into these people with the choices that you make. When you choose to do what's easy instead of what's hard because you don't want to have uncomfortable conversations. There's no difference, sweetheart. There's no difference between, oh, did she wake up or was she embarrassed? I think she was embarrassed the whole time. I know they're a troll, y'all. I know, and I know it's the same person. I know they want to keep giving me a view. They want to keep giving me a view, but I love it. I love the I love the stupidity of their comments because it gives me an opportunity to vocalize it for people so that y'all can hear it. Because I feel like a lot of times we feel these things, but we don't know what it is to vocalize it. And that's the that's the opinion of most idiot ass people. That person, that's that's the the idiosyncrasies that we have to deal with. And so I will happily dumb it down for them and speak it out loud for everybody. Because I know the gratification I get whenever people call bullshit. That more, like that's what the people want to see. We don't just want to see, like people want to see the hard conversations. So just keep that in mind. Now listen, we do have those conversations. We have those hard conversations, but you know, I know you guys want to see more positivity, but you know, I think when we show more positivity, you guys um tend not to watch as much. So I think exactly, you guys are exactly. That's also cap. Everybody that talks about own and how y'all want more, uh, y'all don't want all of this mess. No, what we want is for social media to stop doing so fucking much. Stop popping up at people's houses and at their businesses like you are entitled to information about them. Cut it out, okay? Stop doing all of this extra work on your on your on your job. Because y'all have regular jobs and y'all be doing all this extra fucking work to be investigative reporters about other people and it don't even matter like that. So yeah, it's the online shit for me. But I don't want no fake positive ass reality show. Y'all can keep that. Uh, um, you guys are driven for negativity. And no, I think they, they tune out on the negativity. I think that's when the ratings hit rock bottom. No, uh -uh, no that's, that's, that's opposite. No. Really? Yeah. Where'd you see that at? Where, where'd you pull those numbers from? <laughs> Tell oh, me, no. honey. Oh, no. But we know, you know, we, we, people love drama, though. Okay. We like a little bit. Let me tell you, we do like drama. So we go to Love and, love and what is it called? Love and Hip Hop? Love and Hip Hop. But see, because Love and Mirror, Tunsville was, was, was pitched to us as black excellence, strong, right. powerful, That's African American. Right. So we didn't tune in for drama, honey. We tuned yeah. in for excellence, entrepreneurship, profitability, sustainability. Black, there's, there's, a, there's a segment of black people like myself that make a lot of money, that live well, that want to see you guys doing that. And yeah. I think for a portion, a great portion, Y'all veered off course, but I know you're, you yeah. said that you were talking to producers about getting back there. We do want to see you do positive. We do want to yeah. see you having those conversations with your friends. I can attest to that. Um, real quick, did Tiffany I run Sheree off or did you and Sheree already break up before lie. Tiffany ran her off? <laughs> Look at you on your question. <laughs> I like it. That's, that, that, that's, that's good. That was a good one. I like how you positioned that. But um, yeah. <clears throat> Tiffany, she would run anybody off, you know, in terms of how blunt she is about things, you know. Um, I know she can run anybody off. Um, Sharae and I, we, we still cool. We are what we used to be. Um, we cool. Nothing. We, we friends. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. When y'all break up? We, we, you better say something, we, Martel. Come on now. We, we, we haven't broken up. We, we, we never was, um, people trying to put, like, trying to attach, um, 
like boyfriend, girlfriend, stuff like that. You know, labels. I think we're just too old to have labels. It's either that. You fed her a cupcake I, in New York. I saw it. <clears throat> What's I couldn't believe that? it. In a hotel room, you fed her a cupcake, Martel. What's I ain't never fed one of my homeboys a cupcake. Never. No, no, no. I ain't say she's my homegirl, you know. We, we, we've been dating, you know. I got gotcha. you. A quarter and stuff like that, you know. But the thing is, it's just not labels. I mean, she's, she's still single. Um, I'm single. Um, but, you know, we enjoy each other's company. You know, I take out to dinner and, you know, we, we, we chill. We go bike rides. We go for walks. I like that. We, you know, we do we do hold hands. We just enjoy each other's company. That's it, you know. Okay. And, and, and I feel that either, that's what I said. I think I'm, I did green screen yesterday. So it's like either you, it's like you're talking about getting married or, or you're married. One or the other, you know. It's no, oh, this is my girlfriend. No, it's like, shit, are we getting married or are we not getting married, you know. It shouldn't be too many, too much in between. Because somebody that's trying to be, <laughs> right. that's, that's trying to be dating for you, my girlfriend, for five years. No. Mm-mm. Um, let me, I want to shift because now we, we and we're almost done. Um, on the reunion last season, Carlos yeah, nah. had a very emotional moment, and he shared that he feels like you're still in love with Melody, and many viewers feel the same. Remove the ego. Drink the wine so you can lie. Are you still in love with Melody? No, I'm not still in love with Melody. It's I'm in love with what we had. Okay. Mm-hmm. That I'm in love sense. with um, the relationship that we had. The that we You're in love with the idea of it. Did um, the many things that we accomplished. I must have been children together. Um, I'm in love with the love that we had. Um, no, you're in love with the image that Mel was able to create for you guys. You know, it's both of us being 20-some year, years old and, and getting together, me taking her to church and her just being happy in church. And next thing you know, her joining the choir and me being her, <laughs> her damn cheerleader. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, go join the choir. It's like, you know, I was such a for a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and I, and I pushed her um, to, to be great. You follow me? I got you. Um, so it's like, we veered off it. You know, it, it hurt me that we, that we, we veered off, you know? Um, so that, we. We. <laughs> you know? we. Yeah. 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 We. Expl- okay. You want me to come back to that? Because when you say we veered off, that means mm-hmm. in sequence. Most uh, definitely. I mean, okay. of, of course. And, and again, um, I don't want, I don't, right now, I don't want any negativity. But, I mean, it took two to do what happened with us. You know, I, got I, didn't you. Just, I didn't just damn jump off the cliff for no reason. Look, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, this stuff has been talked about. I don't even want to bring it back up. And again, you know, because I want her and I to get a, stay in a good place. I let her go on her rants where she's upset with me about certain things. Let her do her thing. And then hopefully, you know, the, the light bulb will click off in her head and be like, I, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm not okay. fucking, I'm not profiting off it this much to be hurting my relationship with the father of my children. You know, I'm not profiting off it that much. It's not worth it. You know, let me not make that sacrifice. Shut up, Martel. I'm sorry. It was probably, it was tough for her. You know, it's tough for me too. Shit, I wish she would sit me a box of chocolates or something like that. But that, but that's just my heart, though. You follow what I'm saying? It was almost like, I'm sorry for putting you through this shit right here. You know what I'm saying? Here's some roses, enjoy, and let's get on the, let's get on the same page. Let's let's get back cordial and let's be able, to, you know, co-parent like at our best. You know, I think I was hoping that was gonna be like a bit gesture. I was hoping that she wasn't gonna leave him in the garage when she, <laughs> when she said she did. But you know, when we talked about it, you know, she was very um, ecstatic. You know, she was, um, you know, she was like, thank you so much and stuff like that. But then I heard. I don't know. Somebody mentioned like she said she kept in the garage, and then I asked her about it. She said, "Yeah, I kept in the garage." I'm like, "Oh, okay, that's cool." You just know it's on the from my heart, you know, because I, I want us to be in a good place. I think we've we've done too much over the years. We've accomplished too much. We've and, and I feel that we can't keep going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like like right now, you know, like I sent you some papers, right? I sent you some documents. No, you did before. not send me papers. You did not. I oh, want oh, you told me you were gonna I, send. I, no, no, you no, want to no, send no. them my, now? My my, my piece. Stop. I'm so sorry. My but I needed those papers to come no, from you. So no, no, do no, I listen. have permission? Your permission to talk about those documents? No, listen. Oh yeah, you have, you have permission. You have permission. So my PR sent you paperwork. But the thing is, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I don't even, in terms of like discussing it or trying to say, oh, she was wrong on this, and wrong on that. It's like, damn. It's like I don't even like the back and forth, like right now or period. You know what I'm saying? Even though she was wrong about certain things or don't want certain things to be seen. I feel that us building our relationship is much more important than me trying to prove her wrong, if that makes sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think <clears> that yeah, makes and, a lot of sense. Because we've I, been doing this for years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, when is it going to stop? It's like, I mean, I already don't like interviewing. I already don't like, like, defending myself or, or coming at anybody. You know, it's like, if we enjoy this, let's sit down and talk about it and let that be it. If I do something that you don't like, call me. Don't go to social media. That's what, that's what I'm trying to tell her, like, you. So you can do it, but she can't. <laughs> It's cool when they do it. You don't have to go to social media if you heard something. Call me. Because if I did, I'll come to you and you can talk about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. You know? I did do my research because I was like, let me do my research to make sure I didn't miss anything. And, and, and regarding the papers that you're talking about, I searched high and low because I, I want to be factual. I want to be accurate. I did not hear yeah. her say anything about that particular, what we're talking about. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. I was like, let me go back. Let me pull up this interview. And I didn't hear her. I, actually, what I heard her say is we're not talking about that. Yeah. yeah. Does that mm-hmm. make you feel a little mm-hmm. bit better? No, no, not, not, not really. Not really. And feel free to share where you heard her talk about something if I missed no, it, because I'm not always no, right. No, no, no. So, so I'm going to jump in right, right there because okay. you asked me the question. Um, you know, you know, even, you know, she didn't want to talk about the show. And 
I'm not sure if Nelly's listening, but you know, it hurts me to the core. That, to the um, core. Come on, me. The reason that she didn't want to talk about it because nothing was going her way in court. You follow me? And I'm not trying to bash her. I'm not trying to say nothing negative. I'm just stating what it, what it really is, you know? Um, you know, like she did like about four or five motions against me um, in terms of being an abusive father to my son, which that wasn't true. <clears throat> you know, the court shows it. DHR shows it, you know? And, and to this day, I mean, it hurt me, you know? And, and, and yeah, she did talk about it. They, she talked about it. They talked about that um, in terms of abuse and stuff like that. It's like I've never been an abusive person. I've never harmed my children and nothing like that. And, I, and for me to hear people talk about that, like, damn, I've always been a great father. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 forever, and I forever will be um, a good father. So, so he went from trying to make it seem as if, you know, we all are trying to heal. We all having a hard time. Like he cares about Mel. And he's not trying to malign her. I'm not trying to say anything to upset Mel. I don't want her to say anything to upset me. And now he's proceeding to talk about this court case and say that basically she lied on him. The story is that he got physical with his son. His son told Mel. Mel told the courts. He could not be around the child for about, I want to say, about a month and a half, two months. He couldn't be around. When they finished the investigation, they allowed him to see his son again. To me with that, and he was also supposed to get court-ordered uh, therapy. He decided not to do that. Okay? Just so we know what it is that he's talking about. So he's bringing this up. Nobody asked him about this. Nobody prompted him. He's bringing it up. And it's because the point of this interview is to continue to malign Melody. It's to continue to malign her. Because he said, oh, she says things. I let her go on her rants. Mel hasn't said anything about the court proceedings. Now, what more, to me, when he said he came up here because of an interview that Mel did with Queen She, but that was a long time ago, that's not why he up here. He's up here because Mel confirmed the sex tape. That's what he's mad about. He's mad that she confirmed that he threatened her with the sex tape, so Carson's story must be right. And Queen Sheba did the interview with Carson. So that is the reason why he's here. He's here because he want, he's mad at Mel, first of all, for saying that it was true. And he's here to malign her using the court case. When at the end of the day, the court case is over and the situation that was in place before you decided to try to take custody away from her for whatever reason, because, you know, I think the reason is bullshit. It's still in place. It's the same arrangement from the beginning. So yeah. All five of my children. So, but yeah. So Melody, she just um, she didn't talk about it on the show because it, it wasn't to protect the children. It was more because nothing was going away in court. You know, like I tell people, when you go to the courtroom, you gotta provide the facts. And you know. And we know for a fact there was a time where he showed up with nothing he was supposed to have, and Mel showed up with everything she was supposed to have. And the facts were provided, and you know she was supposed cat, to drop certain things. And, the lying. And just the lying. And I, I, now. I did look, and in all fairness, I looked at the paperwork. I did see what you're talking about, but keep going. Yeah. Um, and again, a lot of that stuff is disappointing to me too, though, because it's like, it's like you'll, you'll say that I, like, I abused my, my son or something like that. And then the next day. But let me ask you this. You want to talk about this knowing that the kids could see it? Because what I saw is what the child said and not Melody. And that's why I kind of want to steer away from this. Because I, no, I read. So, so, so listen, I read so what let me tell you this here. Said. Yeah. So, so let me tell you this here. So if I get either one of my children right here, right now. But you don't want to do that. No, 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 no. Gotcha. My kid's not here. I'm, it's a hypothetical. So you, you're, you're right now about to try to use your kids against Mel. And because Queen Sheba is not that type, she is letting you know we're not doing that. It's a way to, to, to <laughs> first of all, it's a way to let you know she see that what you're trying to do and let you know that that's not what she's on. And it also makes you have to pull your shit back up because you was about to go and run around in the mud right quick. And she was like, oh, no, we're not about to run, run around in the mud right now. OK, we're not finna do that. Now, he don't even have the kids there right now, but it's the insinuation that the kids will come on camera and say a certain thing for him. Then he's going to say that you can manipulate a kid to do anything, which, again, he's doing what I said at the beginning. He says, you know, the truth. At some point in the lie. If I got my children, I don't want them right here right now. And I ask them a question, I can manipulate them 
easily. You can manipulate a child easily. Any parent can manipulate a child easily. Um, to almost say for them to say what you want them to say. So. Yeah. Okay, you. I mean, and, 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 that's, okay, and that's the case, you know, if, if you, uh, if your husband said that you abused your, your child, I don't, shit, you're not going to have your children. You're going to be in jail or something like that, too. Not All necessarily. Let me, okay, so let's let's talk about it, but let's try to do it in a most sophisticated, conservative yeah. manner. I was trying to skate around it so that, you know, I, I believe in, you know, kind of leaving the kids off the table. I did see the documents that your publicist sent over with your permission. I saw also, Martel, that they gave you a trespassing warning. I saw that you were no, no, sanctioned. I'm, 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 sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't say they, the attorney, the attorney. attorney. Okay, attorney. but it was in the court documents that was sent from your team. So it's, and also, um, you were sanctioned. That's why I didn't want to talk about it. No, because no, then no, have no, to put you no, on no, my listen, team. no, listen, listen. It's oh, like, let me I, you know, I sent it. I sent it to my publicist and sent it to you because I'm very oh, transparent. Okay, okay. It's not like it's not like my publicist went behind my back and got it sent it to you. you know, no, right? no, 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 no. But see, we think that you're one of those. You're one of those like really fucked up people, and you're stupid. So what you'll do is you're willing to hit your target so bad that you'll hurt yourself in the process. Like, that's what you're willing to do. You were willing to put out this information as long as you can skew it the way you want it to. But you weren't relying on people to be smarter than the average fifth grader and actually go and read the documents because that's what Queen Sheba did. And you think that people are like you and will not understand those documents. But she actually read them and understood them. So she's letting you know right now. If you're going to try to malign Melody with this information, I'm going to have to check you because I've actually read it. No, I don't. But that's why. Oh, okay. That's well, why. Oh, yeah. okay. So, so yeah, she sent, I sent it to her to send to you. Yes. I am an open book. I'm very transparent. Okay. It's the reason for all of it. So the reason that I was sanctioned is monetary only money. She said that only thing is because I didn't want to go to um, counseling. I'm like, why do I go to counseling? Because um, it all happened when Melody said that um, I hit my son 25 you. times. I didn't see that. I, well, I saw. No. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It didn't say. I didn't see the part where it says Melody said. It said the child said, and it gave an accurate in parentheses, right? Where the child quoted to the doctor, where the child quoted what was going on. I don't want to talk like. So, so, that, so what, you, what you're speaking about is something totally different. You about to talk about the um, like the punch on the arm or something like that. That's what you about to talk about. So that's that's totally different. But it still happened. No, 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 no. No, I'm saying it's still totally different. What you're saying, what I'm talking about, something totally different. Right. So the twenty the twenty five weeks is something totally different than what you're about to, to speak on. But the but, and this is what Queen yeah. Sheba. Okay. This but it's is what he doesn't understand. This is what he doesn't understand. You may be using a different instance, but in the court documents, we now have two different examples of you being physical towards the child. The one you're talking about and the one she's talking about. You see how she did that? Still, uh, it's still kind of in the arena of what you're talking about. And okay, the so, judge... so regardless, so regardless of what, you know, we went to court for everything and it was never found that I abused my child or my children, period. Well, so what they ordered you to do is to go to therapy, and work yeah. with so, 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 oh, so, so, yes. So the fact that they told you to go and talk to somebody means they felt there was some truth to what was said. So that was in the beginning. That's why I was sanctioned because I'm like, for what? You know, um, so this happened at the beginning when, you know, it was more of like, uh, Marta, you struck the key at 25 times. That's when my children was taken away from me for 56 days. And that was before they even heard um, my side or what really happened. It just immediately took the kids. And that hurt me to the core. Um, that was like back in like January last year or whatever. You know, I missed my daughter's birthdays, both of them, their birthdays or whatever. Um, so, but yeah, then we went to court for it. And I, I mean, again, it, it all went my way. Um, she was forced to drop it or whatever um, because they didn't see anything in terms of me doing any type of abusing. And again, I would never abuse my children, period. Um, and then, you know, Melly already had the kids in therapy. She was going to therapy. So the judge said, Mr. Hope. Yeah, they showed that on the show. I remember that. Yeah. So, so, so the judge said, it's only right for me to go to therapy. And I'm like, so I was against it 100%. I'm like, no, I'm not going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I didn't go. And then we came back to court. And then now, I was, how come you he's really proud of telling y'all how he's not willing to do the work that he needs to do to correct his anger issues. Go to therapy, Martel. Oh, oh, Just out of curiosity. Was, I'm gonna tell you, but then I was in contempt of court. So that's why I was sanctioned right there. And then and then it doesn't make any sense. She said, so Martel, since you didn't since you didn't abide by the rules, so if you do ever get full custody, you will not get child support and you, you will not get your um, attorney fees paid. So I look back at that. I'm like, why? You know what I'm saying? Because Because they said go to therapy. You said no. So now there are repercussions for that. You see, that's the problem a lot of you niggas don't understand. Like that there are responses and repercussions for you choosing not to do what you need to do. The same thing is how y'all y'all get mad at women for not aborting babies when you could have just put on a condom. I mean, she's going to go to therapy and, and to this day, 
I'm, I'm happy you that I went to therapy you know, and not going curtailed um, this, but you decided therapy not. Therapy is good for you know anybody that's going through anything, and if you think you're not going through something, you still might need to go. Because... So therapy is great, but you now and now you're going on your own. But during the court case, you would because they were telling you to. That's another thing. You niggas that don't do what y'all need to do because somebody's telling y'all what to do. Y'all need to go talk to somebody too. Because a lot of y'all spend a lot of time in y'all life not having a good life or not being as successful as you want to be and then being frustrated about it simply because you don't want to do what somebody is telling you you should do because you don't want to be told what to do. Well, okay, dumbass. Don't, don't do it. And then when you can't pass your builder's license test and you're, and you're just sitting here with nothing to show for shit at that 40 something years old girl, a magazine cover where they airbrushed you for dear God, a wine can't nobody buy. It's a place where you can vent, um, you know, they can ask you questions and you can just put everything on the table and you're not going to be judged, you know? So I've been in You said vent, but, but therapy is also good. I've been to therapy for healing. Yeah. You know, we all go through shit in life. So yeah, it's, 100%. but, but, um, let me ask you something. What do you think Melody had to gain from that? Being that you feel like Melody spearheaded all of this in the most positive manner. What would she have to gain from making this? Listen, listen she did it like four or five different times. And each time she said she didn't want to talk about it on, on the show or whatever, I, I feel like it was more of a um, poor sign. Because I feel that if something went her way in court, she would have been quick to talk about it. You know, and I'm not coming for you, Melody, but I'm just talking, speaking of facts. She might be on here now listening. But yeah, I mean, it would have been. He wants her to be on here listening. And she's somewhere on vacation. She was anyway. Storyline for her, too. Because again, I mean, I'm being backed right now by her. You know? You said um, y'all were in a good place, though, when, when we open up the show. You said no, we're in a good place no. and you want to keep it that way. All right, so listen, when I say we're in a good place, that's outside of her being on, on online. She's on you know, it. Doing lives and interviews and stuff like that. Besides all of that, like, we, like she did an interview. Um, we went live a few, several days ago, but then like the next day we were sitting beside each other. I'm at the baseball game where she was sitting one bleacher down beside me and um in my son's baseball game. One bleacher down means she wasn't beside you. <laughs> You'll be like, he he's really like it, it don't be connecting fun. You know what I'm saying? Like child, Miss Marlene did not do her job. Martel needed an extra class. Um, or practice or whatever. So it's like you know, outside of the TV, outside of the interviews, we, we get along with each other. You know, so and and. I, and I think that's good enough for me for right now. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay. See, now you didn't got me all stirred up. Now I'm curious because when you filed your motion for full custody, did you did you ask you asked for child support? Why did you think that was fair to ask for child support from the mother? I never asked for child support. Where did it come from? Is that a false? Is that false? Yeah, I didn't ask for child support. Okay, because because it's public record. Right. It, 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 oh, that's yeah, false. Oh, oh no, no, I'm sorry. Did you did you pull it up? Mm -hmm. He was denying it, and then when she said it's public record, he's like, "Oh, you pulled it up? Oh, all right." So you was going to lie as long as she didn't have proof of it? What is going on? <laughs> I didn't ask for child support. What, what I asked for Melody for is to pay my attorney fees, $28,000. So paid not for. child support. It was the attorney fee. I, I can't get... Why should she pay your attorney fees when you took her to court to take the kids away from her? Why should she pay your attorney's fees for that? <laughs> Nigga, you crazy. Child support. Right, no. No, I'm saying when you file for the, the motion to, to have full custody of the children, did you... Why did you think asking for child support was fair in that motion? Oh, oh, oh okay. I'm so, yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm thinking that you're talking about down the line. Um, so, so the reason that I even filed for... He was about to lie about it, y'all. He was about to lie on it. He was really banking on her not reading the shit he sent. That's insane. For full custody is because of the things that I don't even want to get off into it because she's going to get upset. You brought it up. I tried to keep your butt <laughs> she, off the guilt. If she was going to get mad, she would have got upset yeah, already. I mean, but... but... I mean, just to be real, I mean, the reason that I even filed, you know, I talked to her before I even filed, you know? We know why. I was like, hey, listen, Twenty if you to town, days. call me. If you, fly, you, know, you fly out to Texas or to L.A., don't leave the kids here with somebody without letting me know. You know, okay. she, just, she just fly out of town and take it court. Um, yeah. Did you give her the first right of refusal when you Always. let Belinda? No, when you let Belinda oh, get oh. the kids. When Belinda, oh. go ahead. No, I'm, I'm sorry. So you tell me about that. What's, what's that situation that you brought it up? Tell me about it. When she had, did, like, when, has Belinda ever keep, kept your kids overnight? And if so, no. did you consult with Melody? No, no. Okay. Oh, she never yeah, the kids so the kids. Boy. No, 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 no. When Belinda had the kids, did you tell Melody about that? <laughs> We're just visiting when Belinda posted them on her social media. Like, how did that even happen? Yeah, well, her, her posting. Well, you know, Belinda's, Belinda's a friend. You know, Belinda's a friend. She has been a friend for for a while now. She's she's a good person. You know, she dated one of my good friends here um, in Huntsville. Um, they dated for several months or whatever. Um, but he it's I, don't think he knows. I went to an event and you know, I took the kids over there um, for a few hours. Yes. So no, I didn't have to have permission or give Melody first right to refuse or anything like that. You know, we're in the same city and I probably was like about twenty some minutes away from them. So, so Mel, so wait, 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 wait. 
Wait, 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 wait. But it's, I went to an event and you know, I took the kids over there um, for a few hours. So no, I didn't have to have permission or give Melody first right to refuse anything like that. You know? So you don't have to do it when you have an event, but she has to do it when she has an event? Is that, is that right? It is, is that right, Martel? Isn't that a double standard, sir? Girl, get the out of here. Thank you, White Sox, the kitty for this. <laughs> for the super sticker, thank you, baby. You know, we're in the same city, and I probably was like about 20-some minutes away from them. And so they just stayed over there for a little bit. So, no big deal. All right, so now we're getting heated, but we're still staying sophisticated. How does a good friend sign a property deed for you, Martel? Because I ain't never did that for a friend. So how does, what, what type of relationship is that, that Belinda would trust you, that you guys would, you know, she would, she so, would so go. Say, 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 trust me. I'm, I'm a, I'm a best your friend is dating her. person. Your friend is dating her, right? So with that, yeah. And then you went live with Belinda in December. So now he acting like he not fucking with Belinda, but his homeboy fucking with Belinda. Or to cook, because you were asking for a viewer to come on to live. You can cook, and yep. Belinda volunteered. That was December. Yep. How did y'all yep. get to two months later in February with her? No, 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 no. You must be talking about, this, this was a long time ago. When I, it wasn't, long, 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 long time ago. Man, Belinda, we've been friends for a lot longer than a few months. But you introduced her to the world in December what, by way of a live what? when y'all were cooking. Mm. What, what year was Wait a minute. Did she just trick him into telling on herself? <laughs> she just tricked him into telling on herself. For a friend, so how does what what type of relationship is that that Belinda would trust you that you guys would you know she would, so, you so would so go, say 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 trust me I'm I'm a, I'm a best friend. Okay, so Belinda Belinda is a woman that everybody is a legend. He is also dating. We've seen her. She was at the INS wine event and Marceau made it a point to go and talk to her during the INS wine event, the first one. Remember when old girl Mel Nika had that event for him and it was all those women in there? And it was this one woman specifically that I noticed Marceau was speaking to. And I was like, what's going on there? Because it felt like Marceau had this smirk on his face. And I was like, is he going to try to holler at her? But now I realize he knew that Martel was fucking her. So he purposefully went and started speaking to her so that she could be on camera. And this is the shit that Marceau likes to do. So I feel like that's how we know he's been fucking with Belinda because Marceau was trying to show us he was fucking with Belinda, first of all. And now that we get to this part, she basically gonna get him to admit it. Your friend is dating her. Person. Your friend is dating her, right? So with that, yeah. And then you went live with Belinda in December to cook because you were asking for a viewer to come on to live. You can cook, and Belinda yep. volunteered. That was December. Yep. How did y'all yep. get to two months later in February with her? No, 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 no. You must be talking about this was a long time ago. When I, it wasn't what, what December. Man, Belinda, we've been friends for a lot longer than a few months. But you introduced her to the world in December what, by way of a live what? when y'all were cooking. Mm. What, what year was that? You tell me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's your friend. Uh, no, 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 no. So, Thank you for um, no, no. So we, we were um, business partners. You know, it's like I'm even helping her. I've been helping her with um, pitching the show and all of that. And so at, oh, at nah. one point, nah, you know, me starting can, over in life. You know, now nah, he can help somebody get a show now. Okay. So Mel's blood brother can't watch the kids, but random hoes can. I was going to build and she was going to be an investor. Um, but I mean, as time progressed, you know, I, my money back good. And, you know, I gave her, I, I bought her out of the lot and I'm building, right, I'm building that house right now. So, okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a very trustworthy type of person. You got to know me, you know? Okay, because you bought her out pretty quick. So God is good because you got your money back up in 90 days because that was like December, January, February. Oh, you know, I'm good. Okay, okay. Yeah, Let's no, I, 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 think, um, I think the year is off, but go ahead. It's all good, though. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So look, there's a hot topic. Martel. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's already Mar hot. Martel. I just want to remind y'all that Mel has said for years that it wasn't just Ariane and that it was women plural. Mel has always said that it's it's always been more than just one woman. And this is the reason, sorry, this is the reason why I said that he is a cheater. He's not just like, him and Tiffany are not the same just because Tiffany has cheated in the past. He was not only cheating habitually with one person, but he was also cheating with other people during that time frame as well. well listen, we're going to do the funky two-step right now. Why did you lose trust in Ariane when she shared with Carson what you and Melody had going on in your own private marriage? Did that make you feel some kind of way that Ariane would share that with Carson, that other girl that appeared on Love and Marriage Huntsville? How did you feel about that? Hold on, what, what did, oh, I'm so sorry. What did she share with Carson? You know what she shared now. Don't play with me, Martel Hope. Okay, it almost like you're talking about yeah. something different than what I know. 
Okay, I don't know. what hit so, the so, internet? How did you feel about Ariane taking your private marriage business to, to, to somebody she met on the internet? That had to make you have feel some kind of way. You, you know, certain people are, are opportunists and they'll say and do whatever they can to, to get in and make them seem like they're really, really good friends or something like that. And people just, other people, they open up trusting that those people or that person that they are who they say they are. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, and again, I, I don't think that, I think that Carson a lot about things too. I don't think that, well, I know that, well, I think that that, but how do you feel that, about um, people discussing your marital business with the, how do you feel about Arion discussing your marital business and what you have with your ex-wife with a complete stranger and the yeah, take, I mean, you know, I'll be real. I mean, that's disappointing. You know, I mean, yeah. everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. So, um, he can't even criticize her for doing something he didn't want her to do. He didn't want her to tell that girl anything because she said, Car uh, uh, the girl said that he called and she could hear Ariane telling somebody on the phone, I'm not telling her nothing. So, yeah, it's definitely seeming like no matter what, he's going to protect Ariane. He's not going to protect Mel, but he's going to protect Ariane. Right there. Yeah. But uh, did you have a conversation about the way that backfired on you? Because it's not good right now. Did you sit down um, and say, listen, when I talk to you about what's going on, you know, and I'm sharing with you as a woman, you know, then what, however long that was, that's not for you to go to somebody else as so a man. Listen, so listen, um, and we talked to our attorneys about it. So my thing is, Carson, I saw her, her live, whatever. And she mentioned, she referenced Melody about three times on there. <clears throat> Was it two or three? No, I think you know, you, 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 you do know how many times she Keep going. I'm, I'm following. I'm trying to process. Okay, so, so, so she, re she referenced Melody about two or three times. He was trying to shade her. Oh, she's so on it. Then she'll know the number of times that Carson mentioned Mel. No, don't nobody know the amount of times that Carson mentioned Mel, but we know you've mentioned her quite a lot. So I'm like, how is she so for certain that Melody got this information? Unless you already talked to Melody. And so again, if anything, Ariane could only have said, um, Martel um, is really upset and he's talking about um, putting out a, um, a sex tape with Melody or something like that. I know Ariane didn't go to her and say that Martel's talking about me creating a fake page and want me to post. Like, why would I need her to create a fake page and post why? I can create a fake page and post it. You know what I'm saying? But well, how do you think, feel about Ariane just talking too much and oversharing? Sometimes I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. You know? At all. Um, Right, because he's never been worried about Ariane saying shit to embarrass Mel. So, some people, you know, they make mistakes, you know, I've, um, I've, that's taken care of. And some people just make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody does. Okay. Um, so, but that's beside the point. The, the, the major point is, you know, Melly could have called me opposed to going online. Uh -uh, and, that's, not, that's not her responsibility. No, no, no. Let's no, not no. do that. That's not her responsibility. If Ariane no, is having, no, no. hold on. If Ariane is having, let's not do that because that's not your responsibility. If somebody's telling Melody, it's not your responsibility. If Ariane is having a oh, conversation. over a year and a half ago. Never. If Ariane is having a conversation that you don't know she's having and Melody yeah. doesn't know she's having, you're both over here. That is not Melody's right. responsibility to pick up the phone, no. to call you about what Ariane is doing. You don't even no. know. So I guess no, you, you're, not, you're not understanding what I was saying. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not. You. Okay, what, what I'm saying I'm is when, when Carson went live, mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel that if it, if, it wasn't, if it wasn't orchestrated by, I don't know, by Melody and Carson, I don't know, because again, Carson mentioned Melody's name two or three times, saying that Melody, y'all go ask Melody, I'm pretty sure she got the tank, or Melody got something. And I'm like, damn, they must have orchestrated something. Um, once Carson did all her stuff, I feel that Melody could call me. So, <clears throat> when people sometimes when they do things and they're being called out on it, they'll say that the people that they did something to did that thing to them. I know y'all have seen this before where, you know, you've seen a movie or something like that, or you've had maybe experienced it where somebody do something to you. And then when you respond, they act like you did something to them. This is what he's doing. <clears throat> when he said, is it a plot? Now, the only reason you're saying that is because you know a lot of us with sense think that you and the Scots were orchestrating bringing Carson on the show so that y'all could bring up this sex tape. Because Carson told Ariane it wasn't smart to do it the way you wanted to do it. So you decided, and I think you and Marceau talked. I think Marceau and Martel had a conversation and Marceau guided him this way. <clears throat> Hasn't Marceau threatened to talk about, to bring out a sex tape? Didn't he mention a sex tape that apparently wasn't real between Miss Van and his brother? I think he's telling on himself. I think him and Marceau used Tisha because Tisha brought Carson to the T. We didn't really hear anything about it in the edit that made it. But to me, 
is given this has been a plot from the beginning. I think that you wanted to put the tape out, but somebody was like, don't do that. That's not smart. But if people know there's a tape out there, that might do just as much damage. So let's get it out there that there is a tape by bringing Carson on the show. It's, it's playing chess, y'all. It, it's basically like, I know that I don't have to talk about this. Like, I can't come to you straight up because then you're going to view me as the bad guy, right? Like we did with Marceau when they were talking about Miss Van. What you do instead is you bring the person that has the tea. They only have this, this one piece of tea. You bring them onto the show. And then once people see them on the show, the conversation will be forced at some point. And I think that was the idea behind it. Um, and that's why I think Marceau was involved. Marceau also sought her out, told Tisha to use her as a stylist. Like, it's definitely given that, you know, y'all were in cahoots together. And now you're trying to make it seem like that's what Mel and Carson were doing. When really, that's what you and Marceau were probably doing. And, and Martel, what did you share with Ariel? Opposed to going online, dragging me, making, thank making me seem like I've actually put she the video drag- on. Thank you, She Candace. said there's a tape. I listened to it. I heard her say, because I like to listen, in the bushes. And she, she said there is a tape that does she, exist. She, she drugged me. She don't know, she don't know if it's a video that, that exists. She doesn't know that. She did it. I, 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 I sent her a screenshot. I did. I sent, okay. her, screen, I sent her a screenshot um, of, of, of her and I. I did. I sent her a screenshot. And I sent you. Did you see that, that text message in your phone? I mean, that uh, my PR sent So he's proving right now that he sent her a screenshot of the sex tape. So you're letting us know right now that you threatened her with the sex tape. Did you? There were so many images. I got to no, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it was a, a text message. It was only one text message. And I sent it to you. For the, I said I'll, I'll send you okay. all these documents for a particular reason. And I asked my PR if you had seen it all. She told me if you've seen it all. Because when I, when I talk, I want you to be able to be like refer to go it. Ahead, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so the text message, I, I was telling you that I said, stop bullying me. Um, you okay, know I saw that. I saw that. Uh, go ahead. I saw that. <clears throat> okay, yeah, it was like almost like a, a like I was begging her like to, to like to stop going online, saying stuff about me, and, and and dragging me. And this was like a year and a half ago. I was like begging I her like, to stop, I I said, stop bullying me. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think on her interview, she actually mentioned that. But I'm like, dang, if I'm up here begging you to stop bullying me, I couldn't have done a lot before that and dogging you out. No, I was begging you. To... Wasn't nobody bullying you? I think that's hilarious that you use that wording. Just always victimizing yourself. Leave yeah. me alone. And then I sent her a screenshot and I told her, I said, um, I said, I don't, I don't care if this ruined me or not. I said, leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? I sent her the screenshot. And I never said I was going to post a video. I never said that I was going to do that. But I, I guess it kind of, it was saying that if you don't stop, I'm going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I do, you know what? I remember. And I do remember Melody, now that you bring it up, she did go on her live and said Carson contacted her a couple of days before she went live to say, hey, I want to give you a heads up. So now that you're saying that, I do remember that. So did you record Melody without her knowing? Because you say, how does she know there's a video? Because Melody said there is a video. And you're saying, how does Melody know there's a video? Was she aware that you recorded her? If, if I have anything, of course, my, my wife would know, my ex-wife would know. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I, see, I'm trying to help you, Martel, because you said, how would she know? So I'm trying to help you. No. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. it. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Were you both aware that there was a video? Um, Were you hoping? So what, let me, why do you think Carson or Arion, and I want to move on after this. Why do you think that Arion or Carson would make that up? Or Arion would make up the fact that there's a tape or, or, video. or, 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 or Carson would make it up only How would she know Arianne though? Just, only because Ariane mentioned it. I, I don't know. I got you. I mean, Ariane could just mention that Martel's talking about a sex tape, whatever. And then Carson trying to get on the show, which she's not going to get on. She's trying to get on the show. And now she's calling Melody. Hey, like, I don't know. I could apply to something. I don't, I don't know. These, they're good at what they do. All these TV shows with the ladies, they're good. They're good. They're good at it. So. Wow. Um, yeah. But anyway, but, but to sum it all up, there's never, I, I, I never said. So Carlos is good at lying? Because. You said all these TV shows, like... Don't go put a video out. A video isn't out. No <laughs> one told me not to put it out. A judge, I mean, we mentioned, she mentioned in court. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I never put nothing out. Never said I was going to put anything out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why even go online crying or, or making it seem like I did it or something? I have not... Well, it's not her I, fault. I, I already... See, see, this, this right here. Why go online crying? He's mad about her actually showing her vulnerability and people feeling bad for her in that video. He's mad about that. I would not have done it. You know what I'm saying? I would not have done it. And this was a year and a half ago. We've already talked about it. If anything, it should be more like, hey, we've already talked about it. And I'm not even going to make something like this. Well, it's not about you and her. And I think you're missing that. It's about Arion telling somebody else. I think you and Melody were clear. No, so no it's, it's about Carson going on live. Mm-hmm. No, it's about Carson going on live, putting stuff out. It's not, about, it's, person... it's not about what a friend, a friend you act as if you're a friend, right? You act as if you're a friend. Yeah, but what you're not friend, understanding you're is, regardless, Arion should not have said that. She shouldn't have even known that. 
that you had to take. That's what you, you're not getting that. Friend, he was a fake friend, he was an opportunist. And now she can be all of those things. Being an opportunist. Carson could be all of those things, but Ariane still gave her the information, is what we're saying. Ding dong. It's clear as day. And I hate it. She won't be on the show. She won't. I don't care. So she. Yeah, but Ariane reached out to her, show. she said. So how no, does she already already on the show? No, no, no. I mean, how do you know that, Martel? You no, don't, no, women get on the phone. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because women get on the phone and they can talk. I'm a woman. I'm telling you. Women I'm be talking about shit that men don't even know. <laughs> I so know. trust me. So I'm how saying. are you so sure? Oh, and to be clear, I, I don't think that Carson is doing what he said that she did, like chasing clout. I think she wanted to or, be on, I think she wanted to be on the show for her business. Absolutely. Anybody would. Um, but I personally think that Marceau and them are a part of this because he's not smart enough to do this on his own. I would even go as far as to say production might have helped, um, you know, allegedly. But to me, it seems like it was a plot because how would any of us have known anything about Carson if y'all didn't put somebody put a video out? I, d I didn't know who the fuck Carson was. So even if she was on the TV screen and I saw her, I wouldn't have known all of this information until what happened? Until somebody put out a live and or re-put out a live of Ariane and Carson together. Whoever put out the video of Carson and Ariane together were inciting everybody to go after Carson. Once everybody starts going after Carson, Carson then has to explain herself and defend herself. And then the sex tape story comes out. Now we're talking about the sex tape without Martel or Ariane having to put it out. You see how that works? To me, it's definitely giving plot, Martel. I just think that it wasn't Mel that plotted on herself. I think it was y'all. I think that y'all plotted to put that information out there because y'all are still under the misconception that people are going to think less of Melody because she taped herself having sex with her husband. Girl, y'all can call me all the names y'all want to. I'm not so sure. I'm not so Thank sure. you. I'm not so sure. <laughs> okay. But, but I can tell you that she didn't say that Martel want me to go and um, create a fake page and post a video. No, no, no. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Is there a reason you did not reel that in? People cheat every day. People go through divorces every day. People, infidelity Everything happens in marriages. I think, right. is there a reason when you look back that you didn't kind of reel, you know, your, your child's mother in and say, hey, pipe it down. Me and Melody, we're done. Leave it alone. Keep it off the internet. Now that you look back, is there a reason you didn't reel that in? Oh, are you talking, when, when, when? Like, what's the time frame you're speaking about? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to say probably, I took, I took your nigga with my eyes closed. <laughs> I mean, we can go on. He came back and like, all the stuff that she was stuff, 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 stuff about you. Yeah, that I was like, what the hell? A lot of stuff I don't know, like um, like even with Melody's video, like I, somebody had to give this to me or share this with me. Cause I don't. But know. is there a reason you didn't reel that in to say don't do that? Let me and Melody work this out. We don't need. I don't need you as a mouthpiece. I can handle my own battles. You're gonna yeah. make it worse. Now that you yeah. look back, is there a reason that you did not say stop it? Chill. I mean, I, I mean to be real, I, I did. You know, some okay. some people they they headstrong and they go do what they want to do. And I mean, I very you. unfortunate. It's very unfortunate that um, you know, some people like that. You know what I'm saying? Some people are like that. And, and two, you know, um, to come mm -hmm. to come to her defense in a way. She was going through a lot too, though. You know, um, mm -hmm. six people on a TV show, Love and Matter We talked about her for several years. Who? Several. Every cast member on my TV show. I need you to call names because I'm gonna go pull the tapes, and if I'm wrong, I'm gonna apologize. No, 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 to no you this is okay. When, when, I, when I say every cast member, literally every the the six the six core cast members, um, we all talked about her on the show. No, 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 no. And see, this is the thing that aggravates me. Nobody talked about her. They talked about your affair. There's a difference because, and, and that's the thing that aggravates me about him and Ariane. Don't nobody give a fuck about you personally, bitch. It's not about you. You could have been any other bitch and the response would have been the same. This is about his affair with a bird. He had an affair with a bird. <laughs> that's the problem. That's it. That's all. It's not really about her. Nobody really referenced her exactly. They referenced your cheats Asian, nigga. They are really talking about you, not her. And they never named her. And we didn't even really know until you got on the phone with her. And if she's so great 
and you care about her so much, then go marry her and be in a relationship with her instead of pretending to be with Sheree so that you can get on level footing with Mel, which you never will. Not not like this. I'm not just period for, for at least three years. And so, you know, you it's like- You don't think that um, comes with infidelity, Martel? You don't no, think that no, comes with infidelity? No, 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 listen, just because you cheat or just because you are part of a, a whatever, scandal or whatever, that don't mean a national TV show should be discussing you if they're not gonna bring you on the show to defend yourself. Not true. I don't care what you say. I don't care what nobody says. It, it, it doesn't happen them, like that. It hasn't happened yes, like it does. Else. Yes, it does. Yes, it absolutely does. You can go and look at all, you can go look at seasons and seasons of Basketball Wives where the only reason that them bitches was on the show we never saw. The whatever basketball player they was, uh, uh, you know, linked to, we ain't never saw the nigga. Heard about him. They on the show because of the nigga and we ain't never seen him on the show, not one time. They couldn't even say Shaq's name on Basketball Wives for years. Royce couldn't talk about Dwight Howard on Basketball Wives. He actually went to court and got a gag order on her. So, yeah. No, Martell, you'd be fucking wrong. The whole of the NBA that's, that, that's wives and old ladies has been a part of reality shows have been there but not there this entire time. Another show. If we're talking about this person, she should have come on here and defend herself. Well, how come you didn't bring her on? Well, it, it was out of my hands. It how come you didn't fight for her to come on the show and say, you know what? Well, well, I, I, I'll, be I'll be real. I'll be real. Okay. I, okay. I did. I did. I, I'll talk, I had a conversation with, with um, the producer. I'm not going to call any names. I had, producers, I had a conversation with everybody. N not saying that certain things she did was right, but I know what we were doing on that show wasn't right when it came to dealing with her. Because how can we up here, some of us, even myself, I was bashing her. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I was wrong for that. Um, everybody else, you know, talking about it. No. Let, the, let her come on this show and defend herself. That's why she always had, that's why you, you see her angry. Going live, going angry, saying it. The only reason he wants her on the show is to piss Mel off. Saying that, I felt that because at one point I started to get angry because um, how the show had me looking so negative and just not being the person I am. I was angry too, like my back was against the wall. So now I'm just you called her a peasant. The first person to disrespect Ariana on national television was you. You told everybody how to treat her. And now you want to act like you was mad on her behalf? Boy, bye. Well, you had a strong business case. We call that as she needs to be here because of blank. She well, needs to I, be I, here. I, well, it's very simple. She needs to be here to defend herself only because we're talking about her continuously for years. That's, that's it. No. The only reason they would have brought her on that show if you was in a serious relationship with her for real, for real. If you would have been like, this my woman, this who I'm about to be with, and she gonna be on the show because I'm on the show, then it would have been a totally different situation. But you weren't really trying to do that because you knew that would fully ostracize Mel. And you didn't want to fully ostracize Mel. He could bullshit all he wants to, all of this little cat and mouse bullshit he doing online. But if he ever really wanted to ostracize Mel, that would have been the way to do it. And based on the way we've seen him act, he doesn't want to really ostracize her. That's it. it ain't about no business case. It ain't about nothing. How good she be, how good she would do for the show. It's not about that. If we don't discuss a person, that person should be right here to be able to go and come and bad thing. But I'm just talking about yes, in terms you are. of, <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that. Since I'm here on, on your show and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking out and you and you make this is an excellent that, question. Um, Defend like, herself against what? Show, you know, like because yeah. we talked about her for years. We didn't talk about her for years, Martell. You fucked her for years. There's a difference. That's all the reason. Okay. It, it doesn't have to be anything long drawn out. It's because we talked about her. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. But but I think you know. So if if it like it. So there's women and there's men. You know how men go play golf and y'all talk and shoot the shit. Women, we we talk and shoot the shit. And there seems yeah. to be a, a level of accountability missing. On Arion's yeah. part, for you to say, you, don't nobody yeah. need to defend themselves when, when a 14 year marriage has been dissolved. You know, that's that's unfortunate for all parties involved, including the children. So I don't really know what needs to be defended other than the husband and the wife saying, damn, this hurts. Both of us are struggling with this. What does the third person need to defend when they had a choice to walk into this? Because you said everybody has a choice. So what needs to be defended other than I made a mistake? If I knew then what I know now, I would have done better. Exactly. Well, I tell you what, um, when it comes to um, a marriage, exactly. too, um, just like Millie and I, I mean, if us know what we know now, we all made different decisions, both of us, yeah. you know, and, and, and again, um, it's not about the mistakes that I made, Nelly made, Ariane made, again, when you're on a national TV show, and if you're discussing somebody, they should be allowed. So you're not going to answer the question. Defending whatever. If you're discussing that person, they should be able to come on and, and join in the conversation, if we're talking about them.
it, it doesn't make sense to be able to talk about somebody and they're not there to it's, it's almost like cut me out won't allow me to come in and, and speak up i say that that's unfair i would say that's unfair for one side of the story continues to be told to every every i'm saying every blogger does that make sense i get to talk to you get to go talk Ariane doesn't have a side in this because she is not in the relationship. That's what you don't understand. She has gotten online and said a whole bunch of nothing. Her interview with Tasha K said a lot. Talk to any other blogger, but the person that I'm talking about, belittling, not able to come on and, and speak this side. You belittled her. You belittled I think you're here her. today, so I think fair works in, in, in time frames. I think you're here today. I think you should make the most of it. 100%, 100%. I think you and I think you should. I, I think you're doing okay so far. Um, yeah. a few months ago, a viewer spotted you and Ariane out in Tennessee with the kids, and they 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 took it to all the bloggers. I did not cover that, but did one of the bloggers. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes, in an elevator, as a matter of fact. Really? Yes, they did. But sometimes bloggers hold stuff. But listen, what were what were y'all doing in Tennessee? What was going on in Tennessee? I can't recall that. Cause they got it now. You don't remember? Really? They got you. Okay. Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, do the kids like her? Did she like the kids? We gonna move. We gonna move past. It. But no, okay. Because right. they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. And you know they don't, especially the older ones. You know, um, Jessica, yes or no? <sighs> yes or no? No. He don't want to say no, but it's no. I think my screen is frozen. You're fine. No, you good? What did you say now? What was that question? Do the, the kids like her? The That's next one. Do the kids no, like her? Um, you no, know, that's an average mom, and you know she's she's a good mom, and you know she is around sometimes when you just hear it. Yeah, okay. kids take her well. I like that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for being honest and transparent. Yeah. And yeah. I guess my last question is, how do you determine who gets to meet the kids by the women that you're dating? Who qualifies, right? When when you're going through the list, a lot of women are drawn to you. A lot of women like you. How do you determine who gets to meet your children? Well, the next the next person, next woman that meets my kids, hopefully that will be my my future wife. You know, because um, like right now, I've been going through certain uh, motions or whatnot, trying to, to find myself, trying to figure things out. Because again, um, just being divorced just, just wasn't in my, it wasn't in my review. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't. Um, so at times, you know, I felt, you know, a little lost and things like that. But the next okay. one that's going to be my kids, going to be my wife. And I think he knows his, his screen didn't freeze. He was trying to be funny. And who's the wife? As you said, at the end of the year, we're in June, July, we got six months. We got a long time. That's not a long time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know yet. I don't know. Okay, don't give know. me the roster. Run us down. Number one. Who's the number one? <laughs> don't run the roster down. You got five players I, I, on the bench. Who no, you putting I, in? I, I don't talk to that many. I don't talk to that many females. I don't. And that, that might be a, that might be a problem right now. You know, because I'm a homebody. I've always homebody been a homebody. Is good. I'm sorry. Homebody is good. But yeah, when when you marry, you know, the homebody's good then. But it's like, damn. It's like I don't I, I don't get to meet people like that. You know. You can go back to the church. We oh, he wants y'all to feel sorry for him. All of you, all of you, you know, I need to be poked in my vagina women so badly. Like all of y'all, he's he's tapping on y'all heartstrings right now. He's trying to let y'all know he doesn't have a roster when he does. He's trying to make y'all think that he's just a homebody. He loves cooking, cleaning, taking care of the boys. Between the two of them, it just works out. Nigga, if you don't get the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> Yeah, you know what's so funny? You was at home, huh? You was at home because we remember that you was at the gym. That's what we remember. We remember Mel was at home and you was at the gym. You say you took Melody. You can always go back to the church. There's some good church women out there. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. You're right. Okay. But just know I didn't meet Melody in church either, though. Well, you say you met her at school, but I, you took I, her to I, church. I took her to church, yeah. To church, yeah. Oh, oh, so what, what were you trying to say just then? You didn't meet her in church. You took her to church. Oh, let me guess. She was some some blasphemous hoe until you found her and brought her to church, nigga. Go to hell. Uh, yeah. You took her to church. You can, yeah. Y'all be yeah. godless as y'all be godless as I don't know what, acting like you brought somebody to the Lord. Go to hell. Should we be congratulating you? You said, should you be congratulating me? Should mm -hmm. we be congratulating uh, you, you on a baby, me. nigga? Um, think, on uh, a I baby. Think everybody should be like on a baby because. This world is just no, tough. no. Go through these struggles every Nobody day. should be congratulating you for no reason. The baby. Any new additions to the family that she we should be expecting? Am I another child or something like that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Any new additions to the family? Is Ariane? Did Ariane okay. have a baby? Yeah, not now. Because I know you said you wanted more kids, so I didn't know if that's now, later. Hey, listen, I'm. I'm you said you, it. Like, no, 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 no. You, I've said that. Yeah, I've been talking about more children, but like now, my kids are getting older. I'm like. And they are like a handful. Like, damn, do I want more kids now? I, I told myself the other day, I said, no, I'm not going to do no more children because, like, damn, yeah, these kids, they, they're a handful.
Because I'm an older season. You said you want a lot, so you don't want no more. They a handful. Y'all know what that mean? That mean when you don't have a woman there to take on the load, it's not that fun, huh? Huh? No more. No, I don't know. It depends on the who I marry. It all depends on that. Who okay. I marry. If, if they want more. Because um, always, you know, when I was married, you know, so as long as um, financial, I can take care of my kids because my, my love is going to be here for all my children. I'm like, what? You know, um, as long as I can take care of my children, I'm going to have them. And, you know, I, I, I do well. So. I can have oh, five you more do well now. Do it, you know? Oh, he said he can have five more children and he'd be good. Nigga, you've been broke this whole time. When you started making money? Recently? Then I would give you 11. Um, no, I have, I have five now. Why does everybody think you have six? I don't know. People just know this. If I had six children, y'all would know that. I'm not hiding a damn child from nobody. I love my kids so much. Maverick. You tried to hide Maverick. You tried. <laughs> right here, attached to my hip. You wouldn't admit to Maverick until you couldn't do nothing but admit to Maverick. Every day. My other four, they're attached to my hip. Seven days on, seven days. But no, I, still, I, see, I see my kids on, I don't say every day, but almost every day. Because, um, you know, they're in camps. You know, they're in school. I go to lunch with them. Uh, but they're in practice. I go to their practices. So, so we have the opportunity to see our, Mel and I, we have the opportunity to see our children every single day. Every single day. Um, probably not the weekends, but, you know, Monday through Friday. Like, when I have them, she can come see them. And, and when I'm glad you brought up Knox because I feel like this is the perfect, perfect opportunity for you just to share with people. Because a lot of people feel Call like, or they have insinuated that him. you're ashamed of him, right? Oh, because his birthday appears. Oh. Hold on, I'm just sharing. They, they, they insinuate, oh, he's ashamed of him because he won't tell us uh, when Knox's birthday is. Not really knowing that he's your favorite. So tell us when it first. The 17th. The 17th. Of, this, of, this, of December. So how do you do that with Christmas? Um, well, you know, I have two others. Um, Martel and Melania, they're around the same time frame too. So. Oh, we know Melania is around the same time. Because we know they're literally a year apart. So they just, it just, it, we make it work, you know? There's nothing difficult about it. And then, too, I don't know about other things that um, I'm keeping Knox in the background or. His name is Knox. Ariane put Knox on that baby's birth certificate. But Martel wants all his children to have M as their first name. So he continues to call the little boy Maverick. But his name is Knox Maverick Holt. What did you say, Ashamed? Well, some people feel like that because you wouldn't share his birthday and they, you know, like they know the other kid's birthday. Yeah. So I feel like this I, is the perfect place. I don't want nobody, I'm so sorry. I don't want nobody ever think that. I Thank love you. Like I love my other four. He, he has more, he's, he's the youngest. Yeah. He's more attached to me. Um, but I don't, that makes, man, so I, does that make I, him I a Nox, favorite? I love Knox so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't have a favorite. Um, if, and if I, I do, if, if I do, it's one of my girls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It might be my oldest, it might be my youngest. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I love all my kids equally, you know? Um. You know, make sure I tell them I love them every single day and make sure they get a hug, a kiss. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they feel the ultimate love, you know, and, and also sometimes, you know, um, you know this one, it's like everything, everything I do is, is love for them to be uh, better people, um, you know. And, and but see, the problem is if you don't know how to make yourself a better person, world, you know, I can't trust your great. parenting skills. Um, and, and the main thing that gives love when it comes to, you know, from Mariah all the way down to, to Maverick. Maverick not hoped. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me ask no. you something as we wrap up. His name is Knox Maverick Holt, not Maverick Knox Holt. That was cute. Post-divorce, therapy. Speaking of therapy, when was the last time you've gone? Because people are eager to know. I think they're looking forward in an episode. Maybe they saw a clip. When was the last time you were able to touch, with your busy schedule, you were able to touch bases with your therapist? I think that um, the last one was when Melly and I we went together. That was um, two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, so we went two weeks ago and um, it, went, it went well. Okay. What have you learned about yourself? post-divorce and therapist outside of Melody, what have you learned about who you are at the core as Martel Holt? I don't think he seems like a good father. I think that, I think everybody, I don't, I don't think people know what a good father really is, honestly. Um, I don't, I'm just saying, like, even with my dad having his issues, I feel like he was just so responsible though. Like, he was so responsible, like, for everybody, for everything. He was the person that was reliable. You know what I'm saying? Like, his word meant a lot. You know what I'm saying? And to me, men like Martel, like, the bar is in hell if you think he's a good dad. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, like, I was raised, you put your bullshit aside for the kids. And I have not seen him do that at all. Threatening to take the children away from Melody was the biggest sign of him not being a good parent to me. I'm sorry. Well, I, I feel that. I can't say, well, I, I say, you know, when, when I go to therapy, I know what I mentioned earlier, you know, it's like a place for me to like, uh, like debrief and just let everything out. 
and, and also um, be receptive for to whatever that the um, therapist share with me. And or self esteem. Shoot, I mean, I, I don't know. I just I, I go there and hmm. You know, to me, I, I feel that she's uh, allowed me to, to be a better person, a better, better father. Um, be able to, to cope with situations differently than what I would have handled um, before, you know, when it comes to, you know, Melody, because, you know, that's what we discuss is like, you know. I feel like a man like him is only going to therapy so that they can learn the language to lie better, not so that they can actually be better, but so they can sound more convincing when they lie. With my, my children and being a, a better co-parent, things like that. So um, that's one of the main reasons that, you know, that I'm seeking her right now. I do want to be a better person. I do want to be a better father. I want to be a better um, co-parent, you know, so. Yeah, for right now, that's what that's what I'm seeking right now. Be a better person. Okay. Does that so moving forward, what can we come to expect from you? Forget Melody, forget everybody else. For your level of accountability, how all of this stuff went on way too long because it did get toxic. Can we both agree? Can of we course. both agree on the of show? Course. All of that did it? Yeah. Yeah, real life. Yeah, real. Yeah. What can we come to expect from you as a man, as a father, as an individual? Moving forward, next yeah. season, TV, no TV. What can we hold you accountable to? Then I'm going to be a better person. Again, without I'm going to therapy for, to be a better person, a better father, um, a better person when it comes to co-parenting. Um, and then, too, I think I'm, I'm going to accept a little bit more, too, you know, from people. Um, again, I almost not did this interview. I almost just let this shit ride. Me, too. Me, too. I was like, uh, -uh. I, I, Yeah, I was, about, I was about to, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like the rest of I'm us. I'm just going God just deal with things. Like the rest of us. I'm about to tell you the reason why, like, we haven't even ever attempted because we knew it was going to be like this. You're going to lie. You're going to repeat the same talking points. And when you get called to task, you're going to get nervous. You're going to get agitated and you might get disrespectful. And then I might have to curse you the fuck out. So, yeah, I, I always knew it wouldn't be smart to interview with any of the men on Love and Marriage Hunt. I, honestly, any of the men on these shows, really, because um, not just Love and Marriage Huntsville, Child DC, um, some of them niggas off ready to love, like, you know, Bell Collective. I wouldn't want to interview with any of the men because y'all don't live in reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I know that I'm, I'm, I'm right, I don't want to have to go the extra mile to prove people wrong. I feel that it takes so much energy from me. It mm -hmm. takes so much. It's like, damn, anxiety goes. It's like, God, damn, I don't want to do this. You know, it's like, I want to stay in a positive place. You know, just me even thinking do this you? interview kind of put me in a, in a position it seems of like you do a lot. everything that's going wrong um, or what was said about me or how I want to address it. You know, and, and to be honest, I feel that still right now, I'm, I'm handling it well. You follow me? Um, like, I don't want to jump on the fence and, and, and say X, Y, Z. You know, it's like, you know what? I'm going to let, let God handle whatever, you know? Because I know other people say to go let God handle whatever. And, and that's how I am too now, you know? I'm, I'm out of the zone of being upset and, and, and angry or whatever, you know? I mean, I just want to just be, I want to be happy. I, wanna, I want people around me to know that I'm good. I want my kids when they come to me that they see daddy is, is happy and not just putting on. You know, because I think kids can, can read through that. You follow not me? Not just so, putting on. Yeah. Mm. I just want to be, be in a positive place. Not just okay. I mean, for, for everybody. And, and Martel, sometimes in black communities, we come up so hard. Shit we don't even talk about. Do you know what love truly... Oh, JJ is one of the worst ones. Y'all just don't see it yet. Feels like outside of being married. Is there a moment? You don't have to share it. It's a yes or no. And if you want to share it, you can. When you when your mind goes back to like second base, first base, safe when it comes to love. Are there are there any memories that just pop up that you can reference? You know, we all have them. Oh, I remember that time. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I know what love is. I do. Um, I, know I know she but didn't pay for this interview. Love feel like. Um, he know, doesn't that, know. For me, that unconditional love is, is some serious, you know? You know um, when did you, you experience unconditionally, It's like you don't see their flaws. You, you excuse their flaws. And you kind of like deal with it. That's not what unconditional love is, baby. That's not what unconditional love is. Unconditional love is not excusing people's faults or ignoring them or allowing abuse. That's not what that is at all. Honestly, y'all, when I love y'all, I love unconditionally. I do. Every person that I have ever loved in my life, I still love them. Are they still in my life? No. I can love you from afar. Love is not always an action. Sometimes it's just a feeling. I care for you. That's it. I hope you're doing okay. But that don't mean that you get to be in my energy and corrupt my peace because I love you. No with it you know because like shit he need to I'm learn how to love his what, fucking you know, self i'm gonna be with you no matter what you know so i know what love is okay I know what it looks like i know what it feels like yeah you don't like, I, I, I can't wait thank to get you the boss lady okay because you've been there before you said you had 85 percent. was that love he is a clown <laughs> 
look at you. But um, <laughs> yeah. are, you saying, are, you, are you speaking out in terms of the love that I have for Melody? Yeah, absolutely. Of, of course. Of absolutely. Course. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm keeping it as real as I can. And, and that's yeah. good. I think that's what people want to hear as opposed to you feeling like you have to defend yourself. Because I think we've yeah, all moved past yeah. that. I, I think yeah. we have. It's good to know that you want to. Um, oh, but listen, I, listen. But listen, I'm so sorry just to cut you off. But go ahead. When, when you say you guys move past that, I always yeah. reference that on both ends. You follow what I'm saying? We, no, we no, don't talk you. about you. No, listen. <laughs> Why, why would you say such a thing? Because I why listen. Because I want to hold her accountable. And I, when I listen to her, listen. yeah, I'm keeping it as real as you know it feels like. Yeah, and I, we gotta go I, I can't back, wait. To get wait. Okay, because you've been there before. You said you had 85. percent Was that love? <laughs> Look at you. But um, yeah. Are you saying? Are you speaking out in terms of the love that I have for Melody? Yeah, absolutely. Of, of course. Of absolutely. Course. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm keeping it as real as I can, and and that's yeah. good. I think that's what people want to hear, as opposed to you feeling like you have to defend yourself because I think we've yeah, all moved past that. I, I think yeah. we have. It's good to know that you want to. Um, oh, but listen, I, listen, but listen, I'm so sorry to cut you off. But go ahead. When, when you say you got some past that, I always yeah. reference that on both ends. You follow what I'm saying? We, no, we no, don't talk you. about you. No, listen. <laughs> why, why would you say such a thing? Because I listen because I want to hold her accountable. Yeah. And I, when I we listen just, to her, talk, just, just mm -hmm. talked about, I mean, the, the, the situation, whatever situation it was, it was still referencing Martel Hope. Regardless of, regardless of what it was, it was still referencing Martel Hope. I mean, it was talking about me, right? The, 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 the interview, the lie. Give me a specific example, like dog by memory. The lie about Carson. She no, confirmed we what no, I no, heard her say. No, no, I'm saying, but wasn't referencing Martel Hope. So he's saying that anytime she references him, so when he's doing shit to her, she can't respond to it is what's happening here. That's what he feels. That's what he thinks. <laughs> she confirmed that she did do some things in her bedroom. That's what I heard her confirm. Dang. What'd you hear? <laughs> I heard what you heard. Okay, it's cool. No, but, it's okay to disagree. But, What'd you hear? Because I'm telling you what I heard, honestly, without, you know, being funny or nothing like that. I heard her say, as a married woman, I did do some things. Yes, that's so, it. So that, that, that only would take What else did she say? That. So was, was her live only 10 seconds? You listen, so you tell me. You no, tell no, me what no, you I, heard. No, I heard bits and pieces, but I'm asking you. I mean, you said the only thing you heard was um, 10 seconds. I heard her holding minutes. herself accountable for sharing her bedroom. She, did, I'm paraphrasing. These were not her words. For having some moments with her husband in the privacy of her bedroom. That's why I'm asking you. If I missed it, share. Yeah, we're not, yeah. not going to go into that, but I'm just saying, like, if we're going to move past you're gonna it. Because you're going to tell on yourself. Let's move past it for, for everybody, you know? Um, but any of you, speaking of our our situation, if we move past it with me, because make sure we move past it uh, for everybody, a part of um, what... Um, her and I had going on, you know, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Anything you want to say, anything you would like to leave us with any positive thoughts, any words of affirmation, anything to Melody? I don't know. I'm just putting it all out there. Maybe you want to say something that's just on your heart or yeah, maybe, you just, but, yeah, but no, um, I think I've said it throughout the, um, the course of this um, interview right here. It's like, um, I do want to be in a better place, um, with my children's mom. You know, I think it's imperative for us to be on the same page, you know? And again, um, I mean, if she's on here, I, I didn't come here to like bad or, or I barely wanted to defend myself. No, you don't have to defend yourself here. So it's yeah. definitely not that. Why do they feel like yeah. somebody's talking to you in your earbuds? I didn't even catch that. They feel like somebody's, I, I don't think that's happening. Why, why are people saying that? Oh, Martel, that? take them earbuds what? out. Can you hear me if you take those earbuds out? Because they feel like they, they, they're like, Carlos King is telling them what to say. I'm like, nah. Uh, what the hell? What's wrong with you guys? It's, it's so funny because I, I guess because Carlos went on the, um, the little tour with me. It's only because I don't want to interview. It's because I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like all this, you know, it's not my thing, you know? Again, we got into the TV round because I, one day I asked Melody, what do you want to do? You know, because again, I was cutting grass and I was cleaning, um, had a cleaning company and all that kind of stuff. And I asked her like, what do you want to do? She told me TV. So that's how we ended up on TV because I asked her that question. So she told me she wanted to why don't you still have the cleaning company, Martel? To do. And I had a connection and we connected to Carlos years ago. And that's why we on TV because that's what she wanted to do. Not because I wanted to, because I'm not, again, I'm not, this is not my thing. So and now, he's not I'm your manager. Carlos? Yeah. Carlos is a, um, what you call him, a mellow meter? <laughs> I thought he was the raindrop. He was the, <laughs> I don't care what, I don't care what he is, but. um. But is he your manager? Um, of course not. Well, I don't know. Like people come oh, up. No, with, well, I'm like, not. I'm, that's I'm, anything. Like, that's of course anything. not. No, Carlos isn't my manager. He is to me what he is to everybody on, on my show. Um, He is, um, he's executive producer of Love and Man Transfer, nothing more, nothing less. Um, You said he was your friend. You said he was your friend, nigga. Yeah, I think I think y'all have conversations with him, and just like any other producer. You know, he want to produce a good show, um, and I want to be a part Thank of a good you, show since I'm here, Journey. and I'm going to give a good show as much as possible. Uh, but I just I'm just not going to continue to sacrifice my my family, um, um, whatever Melanie and I got going on, and my, my children, and again too, you know, that's why I don't want my children on the show because I'm not going to be sacrificing my children. Um, but he was cool with the kids being on the show before he and Mel broke up. Just listening, he's charming, cunning, uh, conning, and devious equals dangerous. Yes.
Yes, he is. Um, for anything, no amount of money, no nothing, you know? So why now? Guarantees. Because they came on before. So why pull the plug down? Just out of curiosity. Well, to be real, because one scene, my daughter, my beautiful daughter, um, she said, Daddy, um, we saw we saw you in a hotel with a, with a lady. And this was on national TV. And I looked at Melly like, what is she talking about? But they left it there. But then I found out that Melly, don't get mad, Melody. This is just the truth. No, okay, then leave it alone. Leave it alone. You, we, we're going on a good part. If you say get bad, because I wanted to end on a positive. No, no, sorry, but Melody showed. Okay, me well, I'm coming picture. back. Okay, okay. So recognize in this moment, motherfucker. Recognize in this moment right now that you're continuing to do what you're mad at Mel for doing. Go ahead. It, well, why do you say it like that, though? I mean, are you against me? We're interviewing. I'm trying to I'm get it. Not are you against me. Not are you against me, Martel? Pull, pull your slip, pull your slip up, sweetie. Pull your slip up. Oh my God! That means I'll have a different, like a heart of questions. But go ahead. No, it's oh, not. No, I'm, yes, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be transparent. I'm gonna be honest about what. If you come at any questions, you know, okay, you know, we can go five hours and I'm gonna answer to the best of my ability. But no, Melanie has showed the, the kids a picture of, of me um, in a hotel um, with with someone. And and since then, I'm like, oh my gosh, I couldn't I couldn't believe that, you know. And I was bothered by that. So since then, I've been telling to get my kids off the show. And, you know, a couple other things happened. So at the end of the day, Mel could have showed your kids that picture, whether y'all were on the show or not. And that's not what happened. She didn't show them a picture of anything. If I recall, they saw you on the street. You know, with, um, I think, I forget what kind of lady she was. I don't know if she was a therapist or whatever she was. But, you know, she asked one of my kids, um, who do you like to be around, daddy or mommy? I'm like, what the? F I said, no. Yeah, so, we, we don't want to. Yeah, no, yeah. exactly. You know, I want my kids to love us equally, you know? I, so anyway, and I think what you were referring to happened like in season one or two, we saw that scene about the hotel. I think y'all covered that in the production. That's correct. Right. And ever since then, is that the reference point that you're referring to ever since that, then? That, that was one of, that was one of a few things that made me feel that, okay, just not going right. You know, um, it's just, it's just not a place for children, like a, a TV show, a reality show like this. I don't want my kids to be attached to it. You know, again, it is starting to look, you know, drama field negative and stuff like that. And I just didn't want my beautiful kids to be a part of it. Okay. Okay. And, I, and I'm happy that the judge saw it my way. Parents that, you know? I don't know, Martel. I read them papers. I think the judge saw what she oh. needed to do. Oh, I'm so sorry. What, what do you mean you read the paper? What do you mean? I, I'm saying in terms of the reason the kids are on the show is because- Oh, yeah, yeah. That, so what you, I'm, I'm so sorry. When you make, because that's a blanket statement. The judge saw it my way. The, that can mean anything. on the show. Gotcha. Uh, but, but, but what are you alluding to? We, 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 we still alive. I, I so. thought when I what looked, there were some, there were some decisions. He's getting, He's getting upset right now, y'all. Do y'all see it? This is what happened with Kenya that everybody's acting like they didn't see. He's trying to hold it together, but it's teetering on slipping. That were rendered by the judge to bring no, you no. both together. Of course. She's the mother. I'm the father. We better come together. But you have to clarify. That's why I said that's a blanket statement. When you say the judge saw it my way, people don't know what you're talking about. You we have to just be talking, we, were just talk, we were just talking about, unless you're going to do some editing, but no, we, we were mm -hmm. just talking about the kids. I just want to make sure you I mean, but okay, but what? No, because what he's doing is whenever he says that the judge saw it his way, it's his way of making it seem like the judge was on my side, so Mel must be wrong. That's what he's been doing this entire time. He released a lot of court documents that were only showing one part of it to make it seem as if Mel had been proven wrong in court or something like that. When, if that was the case, why didn't you get custody of the kids? Because this was about you taking custody from her. You didn't win custody. The judge not see my way though. Only thing she Thank you, Lisa. She was in the car with her children and they saw him with Ariane, revisionist historian. Oh, wait, That's what I call $20,000 back. And that was because I was sanctioned because I didn't go to the therapy. So but what are you talking about though? That's it. I'm I transparent. I, I'm transparent. Right. Whatever you want to talk about, we can talk about it because I'm. Okay. I'm I just want to make sure anything. that whatever the judge, saw, the judge saw most things my way. The judge saw 99% of things my way in the courtroom. 99%. There we so go. What do you say? He got it out. Okay. What, what do you mean your way? What Run did you it. need to go your Run way? It, like, I, didn't, I didn't want the kids to be on social media. They're not on social media. The kid, I didn't want them to be on TV. They're not on TV. Um, what else? Um, the, the, the motions that Melody filed against me, it didn't go her way. When, uh, the abuse, the abuse, the abuse. Um, even the DHR, calling the DHR on me, it didn't go her way. None of it. You got the paperwork. It didn't I go didn't her see way. Melody ask for anything against you. I saw you ask for full custody of your children from the mother. I didn't see Melody that, ask. That, that was in the beginning. That, that, I that still did not see Melody okay. ask anything to be inflicted on you from the court. Okay. But anyway, she thought. That... So right here, right here, right here. I didn't see Mel ask for anything to be inflicted on you. Because everybody loves saying that Mel and Martel are the same. People love saying that shit. If that is the case, can somebody explain to me why she's not trying to get custody away from him? 
Like, she didn't try to take custody from him. Fair. Okay. Is that fair? No, no, no. I want to be fair. I don't want people to think you, I'm trying you, to be. Listen, no, that's okay. But you can almost call Millie right now. After she saw like 40 <laughs> motions. I don't even know your number. <laughs> Counter motions, sir. Counter motions. Listen, I'm just saying. It was four motions filed against me, right? And they all went my way. Every last one of them. That's all I'm saying. Okay. okay. Now, I saw different. I, 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 I have a, I'm so sorry. Say it again. I saw different. What did you see different? Oh, that nigga mad. <laughs> you mad. Melody did not ask anything of you. I saw that you were denied full custody. I saw you were denied child support and other ones. And attorney's fees. The is attorney's fees is why? Because I, because I was sanctioned, right? And I told you that, I've told you that three times now. I was sanctioned because I didn't go to what? Therapy. I was sanctioned. So I couldn't get child support. I, could, I couldn't get child support and I couldn't get what? My attorney fees paid by her. I already knew that. Because again, the judge ordered that in court because I told her I wasn't going to um, therapy. That was it. Okay, my but you, but you, you said you, you do your due diligence. I do. So and a, a lot of other people do their due diligence. I'll have another interview with you. Go find it, and then we can talk about it again. You said and no, then no, no. I said, I said, I said, you go find it. I do, I do. We can talk about it. Remember, so, so hold on. You remember when we first talked, and you wanted to talk about this? What did I say? What did I say about talking about child custody cases? That she was gonna come. We're being transparent. Do you remember? Uh, mm, I don't. Tell me. I said that's not a good move. It could backfire. People no, don't listen. Like, you don't remember I said that? So, so, and my thing is, whatever the truth is, let it be out. I don't care what backfires or what comes which way, left, right. It doesn't matter. But you know, if it's the truth, was I fair? Truth. That's the point. Was I fair? Yes or no? You got to give me my credit. Was I fair? Um, I mean, did you tell me what happened? Um, did you share with me what you just said? Did I say, I don't think we should. I think we should keep it positive. We should keep it about you. We should talk about what you're doing. Oh. Yes or no? Did I not say that? But, but yes, listen, so I don't, I don't really do interviews as much. So, so now that I'm here and I mean, and you have the information um, and I, I feel <laughs> that if, if you didn't want to discuss it, you should have, you could have told me. I did say that. We're not, but did oh, I, I, already... it's, not that, it's not that I didn't want to discuss it. I gave oh, you okay. recommendations. Did I or not? That's all I need you to say. Come on now. To me, hey, listen, it's, it's, it's an interview, and then, too, I, 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 want, I want to put it out there. I want people to, to know truth. That's it. And, you know, all that is public record. Our records are public records for people to go and pull to, to know the truth about everything, sure and everything I said is the truth. Um, this dumb yeah, as a box yeah. of rocks. <laughs> so, I mean, and I have no shame in none of the things that you guys will pull um, from the courts. Yeah, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to go to therapy. Yeah, so therefore, the judge said that I cannot receive child and support. And he only feels comfortable saying this because the black community loves to disparage anything that would help them, you know, be better mentally uh funny and crazy at the same time thank you for the super chat a good father he keeps saying she does harm when it's all him what he does on this show is what people will come to his kids about ariane's son as well and i can't get my twenty thousand dollars back hmm. i feel that but i still try to get my twenty thousand back anyway though okay so, but you yeah. i'm just focused on the part where you said you want me to do my due diligence and i feel like i did when i talked to you and your pr team so i, I i'm like oh. come on because i'm a fair person i'm a fair person um, Somebody's calling yeah. Martell. You're fucking up. <laughs> I guess I, you, you, Martell, are you there? Yeah, somebody was calling. I'm sorry. What you saying? That's, right. That's okay. I felt like I, did. I was fair. I try to be fair on my interviews. You Most know? of us are too smart to interview these niggas. Most of us are too smart to interview these niggas. Most of us. Oh, oh so yeah, that, I think you. I think yeah. you have been. I think you have been, and I appreciate okay, that perfect. too. But you okay. know, um, I guess when you talk about certain topics, it's it's okay for I don't know for some disagreement. But but again, it's like for some I, disagreement. I the facts, and and the facts are available for whomever to pull. You know, um, I think I interview. I think that we that you probably talked about PR what a couple of days ago, and it kind of happened so fast. I don't know if you could have pulled a couple of days ago anything. today. Like we've been, I talked to you. How many days? I talked to you a couple of days ago with your PR team. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I just want. I mean, I I, I try to be fair. I, I, uh, down, overall, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Down, I think you did good. I mean, it's a I bet you somebody called him and told him to calm down. Tough interview. It would be tough. People have a lot of questions. No, um, you know what? I, I'm not gonna say it's tough because I, I feel that you, you know if I'm coming to the table being transparent and open about whatever and we can talk about whatever so i don't i don't see it was, it was tough only time it gets tough when you start talking about relationships and stuff like that yeah, yeah. I, i'm just I'm like you took me for a toast because i'm thinking well why is melody having to file motions if y'all are you know co-parenting well but maybe that you said we can come back to it we can come back to it you know yeah yeah so when you go pull out pull all the documents up <laughs> so i'm trying to pay for the records right now um get all get, get all the records um from every time we went to court but no um i mean she'll, she'll tell you I'm, I'm pretty sure she ain't gonna um run away from it she'll tell you that yeah i filed like four motions against martel um abuse Four, like four times. I don't know why she would tell me anything. Just like you no, would. No, 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 no. I'm saying okay. since, since you are not talking about it now. I mean, you're you yeah. what are you a blogger, blogger or something? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah, so I'm, I'm saying like if you. Well, what are you a blogger or something? Oh, that little quick shade. We like that. That was cute. I love the blogger shade. I love when people on reality shows try to shade bloggers. Like y'all don't need us. Let me ask you this. That don't make no sense. Have I have, have I ever reached out to you today? 
I mean, before today, have I ever reached I, I, out? I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Have you. I ever right. asked so you for anything? So why would I go and reach out? Have I ever asked you for anything? Never in your sorry ass hand in marriage. I've never asked you for. No, I'm sorry, y'all. The color purple. I'm sorry. Anybody on the cast to verify? Oh, so, so so you don't know Melody? I know Melody because I interviewed with her. Just like just to the level that I know you. Oh, 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 so this on, oh, oh, so I don't, I don't know. I don't, hell, I don't know. So this something y'all done? Just did the interview and that was it? Absolutely. Oh, shoot. Hold on, no. Are we being transparent now? You know, oh, 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 out there. Oh, no. I, 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 I didn't know if y'all were friends or not. I don't know. I didn't know if y'all were friends. I didn't know that. So that's why Texas. Where do you guys reside? Okay. I okay. interviewed. What... I've interviewed. Uh, what's his name? Big. Oh, Big her, her mom. I interviewed. Okay. I interviewed. Oh. Like, hold on, hold on. Because okay. I can go down a list of reality stars. Don't okay. know any of them. Oh, okay. I thought you and Melly were friends. My bad. No, are you and Carlos? That's like saying, are you and Carlos friends? Are you and? Yeah, yeah, we are. We, we're friends. I'm not. <sighs> Here we go with the friends thing. In the inside circle. Carlos, I'm friends. Now, if you can get me in there, get me in there. <laughs> but think you would want me on your team. Oh, one. Of, oh, you know what? I, it's not to me. It's not even about the team. You know, it's like I want us all to, to just coincide together. That's it, man. For real. Especially come to Melly and I. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want nobody on her side to be like against me, and I don't want nobody on my side against her. Nah. You know? You a lie. We, we got, we you a lie. You know so I think I mean, all you do is get people to be against that lady. That's all you do is incite people to be against that lady. You is a liar. People from Bell Collective, Ready to Love, Love and Mirror, Tunsville. I mean, you name it, I'll play it. Who's all those other shows? I don't even know. I never heard of those. You can go through my playlist. Oh, you ain't never heard those other shows? Your friend produces some of them. I never heard of those shows, though. They're on own network, so that's real bad that you don't know what your company is yeah, doing. I, mean, I, I, I don't even watch TV. <laughs> That's horrible. That's like going to an interview and not knowing why you're- Well, we know you don't read books. So do you take in any content? Interviewing for the job and not knowing nothing about the company. Come on now. Oh, no, that's, that's not the same. No, because if you do an interview and not knowing anything about the company, the only, I'm already on the show in home. I ain't got to know nobody else. Does that make sense? I ain't got to know nobody. I go to work every day. All right. I'm, ready to, I'm feeling in the morning. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Marco, you are a handful, but I have had a pleasure interviewing you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You give me too much credit. No, I, I don't know any of you. I just interview whoever comes up, whoever I reach out to, whoever I work with. I, and I felt players. I've had spiritual coaches. I mean, mm. people from all around the world, you name it. I, you know, it is what it is. That's how it works in this blog. Yeah. But yeah, okay. yeah. So anything that you want to leave the audience with on a positive mm. note, you just want to, anything that they can expect coming down a pipeline, the wine, mm -hmm. the suits. I know you have a special uh, Martell Hole collection by Miguel Wilson. Oh um, man, you saw that? Did you see the event? Miguel, Miguel those amazing event. So he has a store up in uh, Maryland, um, right down the pier. And you know, he had a um, black type um, event that I was, um, you know, I gave like a sneak peek of um, what's to come for uh, my suit line and whatnot. And you know Miguel, man, he's he's top tier. You know he's a, his event out in uh, Atlanta, which is a polo and fashion show. It's superb, and um, I'll be out there in October. So who's ever listening, make sure you guys follow Miguel Wilson and be at that event because it's it's amazing. And okay. um, so hopefully um, in a couple months, you know I'll be showing. Okay, so Queen Sheba did her thing. Great interview, Queen Sheba. This was fantastic. I love her content. I watch her all the time. Um, I actually have to go finish watching her review of this last episode. Um, so y'all make sure y'all go and follow her and subscribe to her channel and support her. Um, for the great content, for the great interview that she did with him. I don't have the patience for this. <laughs> I don't have the patience for this because you're not about to come on my platform, play in my face, lie, repeat the same bullshit, and then try to play on my intelligence, child. Uh-uh. Okay, and plus, like, I eat motherfuckers like that for breakfast. Like, to me, it, it, <laughs> I I don't even have the energy all the time because I can already read you down. Like, it, it don't even matter. That's another reason why they'll never come talk to us on Ooh Ladies First Panel is because we'll read them down. Like, we're good at it. You know what I'm saying? Miss Cookie Ray, thank you for the super chat. Martell's a lie and the truth ain't in him. It's not. It's really, really not. But shout out to Queen Sheba Child because I needed a little giggle. And she absolutely gave a bitch a giggle with this one. She held his feet to the fire. Okay. Uh, uh, really, honestly, this was to me probably what would have happened in, if Marceau wasn't there for that conversation with Tiffany last episode. Because Tiffany was about to turn that shit around and make him feel better about it. And then Marceau was like, well, Sheree, you know, we learned Sheree uh, isn't quick to slap a bitch. And it's like, you're so immature and so thirsty for attention. We wish you would just go on away somewhere. Like, go on away from us with this, Marceau. You know what I'm saying? That's why I felt that way. Um, but I just want to say this, y'all, before I go. Because y'all know, I I'm not going to sit here and talk all bad about this man without saying something that I've learned. OK, y'all know I was on vacation. You know what I learned about myself? I have control issues. OK, so I recognize that I have anxiety about the way other people perceive me and my husband if we are out somewhere, specifically if we are out in a place where we don't know anybody, all of that type of shit. 
right? So if he's being his loud, jovial, charismatic self, I might feel anxiety and then try to control him. So while we were on a trip, I would counteract that and, and try to like correct that within myself. I know that's something that my dad gave me, that needing to correct people and control them out of what you feel like is protection because you're picking up on other people's negative energies and you don't want the people that you love to get caught up. So often you don't want to be seen like that. You want to kind of make sure that y'all are low key, like, but it's still me trying to control, right? So that was one of the things I learned when I was on this trip that I was like, I'm going to make a conscious effort to not do that to him. Because if he's going to allow me to be who I am, which he does, then I'm going to allow him to be who he is. And I feel like it's about being introspective. This is, this is the problem with a lot of people and with men like Martel. You don't want to self-check. You don't want to fix what's wrong with you because you don't think anything's wrong with you. Because for you, the worst thing possible is for somebody to see your flaws. But the funny part about it is the harder you try to hide them from us, the more we can see them. So, yeah. I feel like we can all learn something in therapy. And we also need to be able to see ourselves in situations. And I feel like this man cannot see himself. Therefore, he cannot be accountable. He doesn't know how to love. He can't be a good father because he does not see himself and he refuses to. You got to see yourself, y'all. You have to. But with that being said, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. This is a nice long live. Once again, make sure y'all go support Queen Sheba's channel. And I will see y'all in the next one, child. Bye.